ready to do this thing. My little brother, the soldier of death. So I, I like it. This show is presented by On It. Bidets are back, everyone. The Church of What's Happening Now is proud and honored to introduce you to HelloTushy.com. HelloTushy.com makes portable devices that spray your butt, your tushy, clean with water. Go to HelloTushy.com slash church right now to get 10% off of your order. That's HelloTushy.com slash church. Nobody wants to have a stinky muffler during the holidays. You understand me? No one does. The show is also brought to you by <coughs> Hint Water. Hint Water is pure water infused with a fresh taste of fruit. With a taste of fresh fruit, excuse me. And the best part is, our listeners get a single variety pack ship variety pack shipped directly to your door, including three bottles of their four most popular flavors for only fifteen dollars. That's drinkhint.com/church. Drinkhint.com/church. I'm drinking some apple as we speak, and it's delicious. Oh shit! You wanted it, you got it, cocksuckers. Uncle Joey here. Yes, but as a known scientist, it's a bit surprising if the girl blinded me with something. My little Goomba Lee Sayat. The Princess of Jersey, Vicky Pezza. Yo. Here we go, taking you back. Taking you back, cocksuckers. Here you go, get the bikini on. Bang, 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 Oh, shit. Break out the cocoa butter. Here we go. It's over. Break out the gorilla biscuits. We're going deep. Wednesday, 16th of November. Oh shit. Oh shit. Here you go. I'm going to take you into murky waters right now. If you're driving, wiggle that fucking ass, cocksucker. Yeah, I'll let shower. Dance this motherfucker. Here we go. Uh oh. Oh shit. Dig this one. Science. Damn! Uh uh, uh uh, uh. Hey, hey, hey. The church of what's happened now, cocksuckers. What's happened? Wednesday night. You're here. I'm here. Everybody's healthy. Half the week is over. Clinton is dead. Trump is bullshitting you. And it don't matter because Uncle Joey's here to save the day with his trusted little fucking Jewish fucking velvet hammer. And the princess of New Jersey, Vicky Pezza, welcome. To the show, Vicky Pezza. Thanks for having me, We're guys. We're still here. You've been here since day one with us. We chit chat on the phone. Now you're working on a whole different podcast. Yes, one that pays. <laughs> they laugh, they giggle, everybody's happy and shit. Lisa, at what's up with you, cocksucker? Oh my god, I'm doing good. I'm enjoying this chocolate. I had a, I'm having a, have a fun weekend ahead of me. I'm excited. What are you doing this weekend? I'm going to Pismo Beach because uh, Paula is getting her bar results. So, oh my God! Here yeah, we we'll, go. Here we we'll go. We'll see what happens. Here we go. When is gonna get fucking food poisoned this week? Did you get a food pack? What did you do already? <laughs> There's no. I've There's never always gotten something. Food There's always something. He comes back with fucking red eye or a stain on his head like the fucking ex president of <laughs> Russia. And last time he went away, when they came back with a fucking thing on his head, and he didn't even know it. He's walking around with a patch of fucking fungi on his head. Oh my God! From the jacuzzi. Oh. It was the jacuzzi. It was Airbnb's fault. So this time I'm staying in a hotel. Thank fucking oh God. God. You, know, you can blame it on the maid, Esther. You don't have to worry about fucking Airbnb. <laughs> Esther didn't clean the toilet. I got a red rash between my legs and shit. <laughs> Luckily, you won't see that. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> nah, those fuck. I like, listen, man, I like hotels. Yeah. After traveling so long, I really do like hotels. I don't yeah. know why. I just feel safer. I feel better. I feel cleaner. You know, yes. I always bring flip-flops and shit to protect yourself because, you know, these people are animals. What's the deal with Airbnbs? It's like you're staying at someone's house, essentially. Is that? Yeah, pretty the much. Idea? Uh, I don't think so. Not for me. 
It's not for me. No. And I don't want nobody staying in my fucking house no. either. <laughs> like renting a room to some guy, 60 a night. I don't know what he's doing in there. I don't know what the fuck you're doing in there. I don't know you. That's the creepiest fucking thing in the world. Yeah. You know, it's, it seems like instead of watching out, we're giving more trust. It's like um, Uber, for example. Yeah. Okay, Uber or any car service. You know, I was talking to a cab driver because I always take a cab back from... Burbank Airport. I feel bad for those guys. They sit out there from 6 in the fucking morning and youngsters are taking Ubers right in front of me. You go to Burbank Airport, there's 15 fucking Ubers there. Yeah. You know, and the, and the cab drivers are fucking livid. Yeah. They're livid, you know. So I was talking to him one day and he was explaining to me how Uber, if you get into a car accident with an Uber and you sue them, you only get like fucking 5,000 bucks. Like damages and shit, because a cab is insured to a half a million dollars. There was some big difference. He goes, "That's what the consumer doesn't know. Right. That if something happens in a fucking Uber, you get guts." Yeah, because you're suing the person, yeah. this driver, not a a cab company that has this like fleet of yeah. taxis so and insurance. It's kind of weird. They were explaining to me, and that's why we, as a society, it's like, okay, so things are bad in your home. And uh, you're with your husband, and I live at the house, and he, uh, things are rough, for, uh, you know, for Vicky Pez. So you want to rent out the room? That's okay. Now, do you have a choice of who comes to your home? Yeah, you can deny it. And actually, okay. people get in trouble. They're saying like black people aren't getting accepted as much. Like I saw, I just saw that with oh Uber the God. other day, and it makes sense, but. Like, I've only done the Airbnb where I take over someone's house. They have them where you can just, like you're saying, have like a See, roommate. that's what I'd, I wouldn't mind doing that, just taking over somebody's house for four days. That's one thing. With them not in it. Yeah. That, you know, uh, in uh, in 85, I had, you know, I got into some trouble and stuff like that. I needed a place to stay. And I had slept on people's couches, and that's fucking creepy. Yeah. No matter how much you like me, Vicky, your husband likes me. After three nights, it's creepy, you know? It's yeah. like, he's living here now. <laughs> that means in the middle of the night, you come out for a glass of water naked, you know, I'm sleeping on your couch, you got to <laughs> dress up to pee. It's just so many inconveniences, you so know? Uh, I'm a good house guest, so if I stay on your couch, I fold the sheets, I get out of there by nine, right? you know? But uh, it was creepy. It was creepy, even though the people loved me and I loved them, It was st there was still... One point that nobody feels comfortable. Yeah. You know, there really is. I don't care if it's your mother. I don't oh, care. It's a so true. A couple of years ago, a friend of mine called me and he's like, I'm going to bind for three days. I go, sure. And I tell you what, it, it pissed me off because I thought she, being a she, would get up in the morning and wash her pussy and get the fuck out of the house. And he's like, <laughs> no, 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 no. She was one of those game show chicks. <laughs> game so, show chicks yeah so me and my wife would leave and we'd come back and it was game shows when we left then the afternoon it was fucking the black chick that doesn't know who the, who the father is to the baby <laughs> Maury Maury and then, the, 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 and then and the, but she was really into like the celebrity thing and I knew her I know her for 40 fucking years but you don't know somebody that well like, right I knew her growing up and uh, you know you come back at 4 in the afternoon there were still blankets on the couch Gotcha. That's kind of fucking weird. So I know the feeling from both ends. Right. I've, I always help somebody in need. You know what I'm saying? But the, the point of the story is it's so weird. I had a stay. I rented a room once in a house where she was a mom. Her husband died and the kids all moved out. So the kids were like, Ma, you don't want to be lonely. Rent out rooms by the month. And I got to tell you something. That was a horrible. You weren't allowed in the kitchen. You weren't allowed in the basement. <laughs> Oh you weren't God. allowed, basically you were allowed to open the front door <laughs> and walk right up the stairs. And she would be sitting on the couch some nights. And I'd be walking and tuned up to the gills. <laughs> and she'd be, because she couldn't sleep till all my boys were in. She only rented to men. And she wasn't creepy or nothing. And she would go out and she had a job in the daytime. Mm -hmm. It was just, uh, I don't know. I just never How liked many it. of you were there? How three, many rooms? Three. There wow. was three. Me. And another Cuban guy upstairs and downstairs she rented to somebody. She had like a, the sons put like a basement apartment together. Right, right. And you had a sign like it was a month-to-month -month lease. She didn't want nobody there longer than three months. It was kind of weird. I lasted like three fucking weeks. Right. I was there one day. Her son came and he was a coke fiend like me. And we started smoking pot. And he's telling me about his cop spots and my cop spots. And the kid says to me, listen, man, let's just go over to the city. 
I go, I got to go over there anyway at 5. You're just going to drop me off, right? He goes, yeah, it's cool. We go over there. And on the way there, we go get weed. We get some blow. We get high. And he says to me, you know where I get rid of this bracelet? And I go, whose bracelet is it? And he's like, oh, my, I had a girlfriend. We broke up. I took the fucking bracelet. I go, what are you looking for? And he goes, I'll take 50 bucks. I had like $65. I gave him the 50 bucks. I walked down two corners, sold it. I got like 400 for the fucking bracelet. Gold was high. Three days later, the cops come and arrest me. The bracelet was stolen, a robbery. Oh, my gosh. So I got possession of a stolen property, and they took me to jail. They weren't going to, they charged me with something small, but fucking, uh, I had a warrant out in fucking Edgewood, in Fort Lee or something, Cliffside. So they you actually went to a place where, like, they took down your address? I just assumed. Dog, I taught this place. Now, listen, I always dealt with people in Harlem where you give them a little wink, and that means melt it. <laughs> That doesn't mean fucking look at the serial numbers and fucking bring it in, report it. When you sell gold in those days, it was like four pieces of paper. Two of them went to the police department. Some places just gave you one, you sign, they give you cash, everybody's happy, and you move. I had a guy that I used to give him bulk. I had a guy that I grew up with that turned me on to another guy that whenever I had bulk, no questions. Bulk asked. jewelry. That's a weird I term. I go to your house, three, three fucking rings, six bracelets. To, uh, your dad wears watches. I show up, I get fucking $10,000 for oh fucking uh, a bulk, a little fucking... One time I brought him so much shit, he, I, I, he didn't have enough cash. He would always tell you, listen, if you come here, it's always 10, 10K. You got to give me 10 minutes to go get it. Like nothing's going to be over 10K right. unless my partner's here. That's the first time that... like I had dealt with him a lot, but one time I showed up and he gave me like 10... And he goes, it's a Friday. Would you take a check? I'm like, fucking drop it on me because I'm not <laughs> leaving here without my money. Right. And he never ratted me out. Like, I had people who just melt the gold. They know what it is. Well, they know what it is. Right. This fucking hump in Harlem. And like like a, like a it was like a shady uh, place to boot. That's what really fucking killed me. Yeah, I didn't imagine you went to Kay's Jewelers or something. Like, it seemed like if you were going to go sell jewelry. Now, is that what all those cash for gold places are, but just dressed up now? Is that like, do you think that's where like junk Yeah, is? you come in, all right? It's a pawn, Lee. You come in, I look at it, I weigh it. Gold is high right now, correct? It's a thousand an ounce. Oh. Is it, Lee? Can you look up? Yeah, I, I, don't look know, up I don't know what the price is of gold right now. But when I was thiefing and doing my thing in the 80s, it was 900. It wasn't bad. You can make a little living fucking thiefing and bringing back shit, you know? Oh, my God. You catch a good, you know, the thing was with gold that you get confused is how they rob you. What's the price of gold? From gram an ounce or an ounce? Ounce. $1,200. Yeah. Wow. You're making paper now. You rob somebody. <laughs> Holy shit. But see, like, if you rob your wedding band, that's that's douchey to you because the diamond goes to waste. They never really pay you for diamonds. They give you like an exact memento on a diamond. Even though your husband paid 35000 for the diamond, if it's not perfect, they start. And when you go to sell a diamond, there's always flaws. When you go to buy it, it's fucking the best thing they've ever seen. Yeah. This is one of the best. Listen, three black dudes died <laughs> off a cliff getting this right. for you. You know, and they held it in their hand until it didn't even hit the dirt. And fucking. Uh, hands were chopped yeah, off to make this. Hands were chopped this, off right. and the whole fucking thing. <laughs> But when you go to sell it, all of a sudden they start finding all these flaws. There's a little flaw on the left side of the diamond. So even if they can get a thousand for the diamond and they know it, they'll give you a hundred and they'll talk you down to a hundred. Unless you want to wait three, they'll say it'll take three hours to mount the diamond off. And then they'll break it. Right. It breaks. Ah. That's why you never want to unmount the fucking diamond because it breaks. There's so many little things with jewelry. So what you're looking for are big rings, even college rings. Like, we used to go in the house, four fucking college rings. You got fucking three grand. You know what I'm saying? Bula, bula. You always hear about, like, NFL players and college players losing championship rings. Did you ever f come across one of those? Never. Never. So to get back to your question, you come to me inside the thing. Your mom gave you a gold chain for fucking Christmas last year. You can't make rent. I weigh it. It's 1,200 an ounce. It's a fucking ounce, Lee. No matter how you cut, I got 1,200 for you. I'm going to give you a six. <gasps> you're going to take the six because you're a desperado. But guess what? When you come back, you got to pay me 12 because that's the price of gold. Right. That's how they get you. I don't know if that's the scam they're running, but there's got to be some profit when you come back. It's like a pawn shop. 
you give me a ring, I give you uh, 300 for 90 days. After 90 days, you could come in and start making me payments. And it's like a it's like a loan. It's like a vig. And if it does, but what if and if it sells within that ninety days, what happens? It's not gonna sell. He puts it in a vault for ninety days and you have a loan. Oh, okay, got it. And then he charges you they either charge you two ways. Let's say they give you three hundred, they charge you whatever, fifteen dollars a week plus the three hundred until so when you come back, you, let's say you come back six weeks later, that you gotta give them Let's say it's thirty dollars a week. You gotta come one twenty. That's how they make that profit. It's just like a loan shark. Only with you ever go to a, who brings their drums to get pawned? You ever go to a fucking pawn shop? They got drums, guitars. That that's why I never got into that's the guitar. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah, that's yeah, why I just never a got wall into the guitar. of guitars. I would have so, snorted. I would have <laughs> snorted every fucking guitar I ever had. That's why. How, that's how they get you, Lee. So how do pawn shops work? Then I thought like if you that's brought it in, yeah. that they would try to that they'd sell it. So they do they only sell? No, no that's consignment. Oh, that's a consignment shop. Well, no. So a pawn shop is when you come in and go, listen. You see that black crack hoe? I want to go do crack with her. What can I get for this fucking ring? And they take this ring, and they weigh it. He goes, "What do you want to do? Sell it or pawn it?" And they go, "Let me pawn it for ninety days. Maybe my luck will change." So let's say you have this ring is worth eight fifty. They'll give me three twenty five. But for me to get the ring back, it will cost me ten points a week. So that's thirty two fifty. So I have ninety days to pay a flat fee. There's like a flat fee, and then after that, you pay on juice. You come in and go. What if I pay juice every week until so I don't lose it? And then if they lose it, then they can sell it. Then if if you don't pay it, then I can sell it. You could buy it back, but you're gonna have to buy it back at retail. Right. Fuck. Just like any other customer. Just like any other fucking customer. Jeez. So every time, that's why I don't like buying shit at pawn shops because it's bad luck. Somebody sold it who was down on their fucking luck. Do you want to give me a wedding ring from a fucking pawn shop? Now I got this death finger on me and right. shit. <laughs> I got somebody's fucking maluk on me now and shit. I got to <laughs> I gotta go home and t- kill ten chickens and get fish eyeballs and rub them on my neck, and then do a Jew thing. I got to do ten thousand religions to get that fucking kiss of death off me. I hadn't been in one, and then. Paula and I were somewhere, and we just stopped. I was, I was like, I've never been in a pawn shop. Let's go in. And it looked like it hadn't been changed since, like, the 80s. That's all it is. It's just a room oh my God. with accessories. Anything from cameras to films to... It's fucking creepy. And you look at this stuff, and you're like, where did he get this shit from? But I watch that show sometimes. That's a very interesting show. I've learned a lot of shit. And listen, it's not like you watch it when you're on the road, Ricky Patrick. Yeah. You put it on, you write, you have YouTube on, you listen to music, but people bring them interesting shit. I was watching it last week when the Green Bay Packers won Mm -hmm. a couple years ago. Every player gets a thing, but the starters' wives get something. Really? Did you know that? Something like that. And they had a pen. And they brought the pin in, and the guy goes, yeah, this is official. They called the NFL straight up. But then they found out that, like, the quarterback's wife, the MVP's wife, gets one with, like, a diamond on Something fucking just only, you know, crazy shit that you think is nothing. And that's how they find value in things. That's a very interesting show. Like, Shark Tank, you'll like Porn Wars. Porn, whatever, with that company. Pawn stars, I've seen it. Yeah, I've people come it. in and they bring the weirdest fucking things, and those guys find value. Basically, you're a loan shark. Yeah, you're a legal loan shark with with something in the middle. There's what, what's that? It's like a uh, what were you saying? Oh, layaway. No, no, no we, <laughs> we were talking about the thing how you can't sell it, so you'll just get five dollar donations on PayPal. Oh, right, right, right. Like that just stands in the way. Like a bowling ball stands in the way. Like, you ever go to a pawn shop? There's a bowling ball. You're like, who the fuck pawned their bowling ball? Like, what can you get for a fucking bowling ball? Like, seven dollars? Seven <laughs> fucking dollars for a bowling ball. Jesus. I, uh, it must be huge in Vegas. It's like, around casinos, don't you think? Oh, huge. That's why they're all over the fucking place. Fuck. What do you think they're all over the place? And they'll buy a wedding band quick because they'll sell a wedding band quick. Holy okay, shit. So, oh. We're in Vegas. They can't lose. You can't lose. 
I'm drunk, you're drunk, let's go get married. Hold on, we got to stop and get a wing at a, at a fucking pawn shop. <laughs> go to a pawn shop, get a ring for 250 put it on the visa. Oh, Fuck it. my God. Yeah, it's a no-lose situation. Pawn shops are better. I don't know how they make money. Like, I really don't know. You have to do high volume. Like, it would be a... Because some of them, they're, they're retail spaces, and, and there's a lot of rent. So... Yeah, yeah, I've always too. wondered... I used to live by one, and I went in there a couple times. I remember one time I found a ring, and I went in there and dropped it off. And uh, <laughs> How much did he take for it? $34 or something. <laughs> it was like a rusty ring I found, and it was really gold. It was Something happened to the outside of it, but the inside had like 10 k and I saved it for like a fucking year. <laughs> And one day I go, what the fuck? I need a bag of weed. I walked over and I got like 30. I'll never forget I got 34 bucks. Perfect. <laughs> I was looking for like 50, but I got 34. That's a gram, an edible, and a $2 tip, $4 tip. Well, who gives a shit? Sold. Everybody's happy. <laughs> you ever pawned anything, Vicky Peasant? No. No, I never pawned anything. Um, I, the whole concept of it's like so crazy to me. I know, I do know that uh, at one point I was told a story in my family that my grandmother pawned her wedding ring, um, but ended up getting it back. So I never knew how that would work. So what you explained kind of kind of makes sense. Yeah, it's 90 days. You're not really yeah. giving it away. Right. It's a fucking loan. You know, it's a loan. Like, I don't understand the payday loan. Oh, that's even sad. Like, what I think it's that? the same thing. I think it's the same thing as, like, cashing a check. They fucking bang you out. Like, I was thinking about today. I was, I was driving, and I saw checks, 1.5%. Like, the place on uh, Whitsett. Uh, not Whitsett. It's on Hollywood Boulevard. Everybody's cashed one check there. There's a, there's a street on Hollywood Boulevard. That, uh, it's like uh, I f Whitley. Whitley and, and Whitley and fucking Hollywood Boulevard. I had an account there. You know, when I was a desperado, I had an account there. Right. You go in, you show them your ID, you give them a fingerprint, and they'll work with you on anything. They're really fucking cool. And I was, I had, that was my bank from 98 to 2007. And I remember, like, getting the first big residual check from Spider-Man and, like, telling them, like, the day before, like, listen, how much money you got in there? Because I'm coming with a big one for you tomorrow. <laughs> Because, I, you know, I was snorting coke during Spider-Man too. You give me a fucking residual check. Fuck. So here's the problem. If I got a check in those days, like for fucking whatever, $1,000, I could tell my wife it was 800 I'd rip up the stub and just tell her 800 and give right. her like three or five and keep three and snort it. Do you know what I'm saying? I know exactly what If you're I saying. had to cash it through her, she knew the exact amount that I was getting and I was fucked. Here's a shady thing I did. She's my girlfriend, you know. Um, now, because now I'm thinking about it. Now that you mentioned that, um, what I would do sometimes is like when I was in college, like around that age, like you go out to dinner with a bunch of people. Like it's a bunch of people out to dinner. So I would, I would charge the bill on a credit keep card, the cash. and I would take everyone's cash, and right. then you use that cash to like buy coke. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, there's always a scam. And then all of a sudden, I have this huge credit card bill because really. Uh, I've just been like tr using that to get cash off of everybody, and it's like, oh shit, I still have to pay this credit. Can you card. still go to a bar? Can I come up to you, Vicky Peasant? Oh, I love. Can I ask you a question? Uh, give me the bill for me and my friend, but do me a favor. Give me a hundred back. Keep twenty for yourself. <clears throat> so once you give me the bill, let's say it's eighty-four fucking dollars, right? I'm gonna give you a twenty-dollar tip, right? Whatever eighty-four dollars is, it's uh, eight forty, and eight forty is sixteen eighty. So I'm going to throw you a 20, and I'm going to go, listen, do me a favor. Add 100 to that bill. Give me 100 out of the register, and I'm going to give you 20 cash back. Do people still do that scam? Oh, I don't know. It's I not a scam. It's just real. You know, sometimes I'm in a bar and I'm light money, and put, add an extra 100 to this. It's kind of fucked up. It's on the borderline of illegal. I'm right. not sure. I don't think bar servers understand that anymore. No. Yeah, my, no. I remember my dad used to do that. My dad, he used to do it because when he worked at a restaurant, they would give him free meals, but he wanted to tip. So he'd say, well, open this up for a penny or whatever. But, oh, right, yeah. But now, I'm starting, I, I started talking to your accent. Now, everyone, <laughs> like whenever I go to a, a restaurant, they can't even handle splitting a check. And it's on a computer. It's like it's easiest. It couldn't be easier. 
and people won't, can't even handle splitting a check. So I don't think anyone's going to be able to, like, if you went there and asked, put a hundred bucks on this, they'd probably be like, what? I'm going to get fired. In the mid eighties, I used to get stolen credit cards. I had a friend of mine who would just hand them over fresh, fresh with an amount. And you, he, you had to wait till the consumer used the card twice, called in, then they opened the account. In those days, there were banks that they were kinky. People were so kinky that when Vicky Pezza got a card, they printed two cards. One went to Vicky Pezza uh -huh. and one went to me. So they printed 10 cards a day. I got 10 cards and I had 10 dudes who go out and work the cards. Right. And I get 10% of their action. This is a real fucking thing. Oh. To be really effective with that, you have to go into a different area. So if you live in Jersey and I get the bank out of New York, you have to go like Michigan. Yeah. So you would drive to Michigan, go to a mall, and go crazy. In those days, the computer, in the 80s, when I was doing the credit cards, the computers were so slow in those days that even if Vicky Pezza called and said, Hi, it's 7 p.m. in California. So I just realized somebody stole my card. They'd freeze it, but it would only be in that time zone. This is how slow, how long we've come. How you feeling over there, doctor? I'm feeling better. This is a fucked up, right? <laughs> so you could, in those days... You'd, I'd take Vicky Pez's card and I'd overnight mail it to Lee in California. Lee would have two days to use that card before California would get hit. This is how crazy. This, this is the things you learn when you're out there. Like, you guys were too young. Under $50, up to like 1990, if you didn't charge $50, you could just sign. There was no swiper. They put it in a thing and went chk, chk, and ripped the receipt and oh gave it God. back to you. So you were yeah, called. Yeah, I remember them, that. You I were called that. an under the limit thief. People made a living being under the limit thieves. Because I go, Vicky, what do you need today? I need three underwear from Marie E.T. Okay, how much? 50, uh, 40 bucks. No problem. I'll go get you the underwear. You give me 20. And then I go get Chinese lunch and I buy you and Lee lunch. Because right. it's $5 for the lunch. So uh. even with tip, it's fucking 22, 25. <laughs> It was called under the limit living. You wouldn't charge, and because, and you have to go when people are busy. Every great fucking moon. See, in those days, American Express, Diners Club, Mastercard, and Visa sent out a booklet every weekly. Okay. Every week. Every fucking Monday when you went to work, you had to take four booklets, Diners Club, and throw it away, and get four more booklets. Okay. So let's say we're at fucking Starbucks. And I come in and I go, all right, let me get a coffee for Lee. Fucking uh, Vicky, give Lenny two drinks. He's going to need them. Get the dog a drink. Give the guy that fucking Momo sitting there a drink. And they came out to $35, right? Even if she's a fucking Gentile, like somebody who lives by the book, like really believes Batman and shit like that, <laughs> those are the only morons that would stop and open up that booklet with a magnifying glass, because that's how small the fucking numbers were. Even the Visa, even the credit card companies didn't want you to know if the card was stolen, because they get insurance on that. Oh. So the numbers would be like, so you had to stop. I, had, I got a line from here to fucking Lancashire. You got to stop to get a magnifying glass to look at this number and look at the card, 3441. This card is a stolen card. Nobody ever fucking did that in the five years I was doing it. Nobody. If, if it didn't hit 50 bucks, you got it. That meant socks, sneakers, a pair of jeans, two tickets to the movies, and I'd have four or five different cards on me. I'd be working it for four or five different fucking angles. Yeah. It, was, it was fucking insane. <laughs> I, and I thought everybody was in. Like, everybody had a card and a card. In those days, I didn't even have a credit card then. It wasn't even in my fucking realm. Right. I didn't even know where to start to get a fucking credit card. And uh, I had like a credit card with two different names on it. <laughs> I never used cash in those days. For like two years, I was living like a doctor. <laughs> oh, and you never got caught? Because that's what I was worried about. I got caught twice. One time I got caught by mistake. My ex-wife got nailed in San Francisco. And when they asked her what her name was, the dumb bitch was from Denver. Her name was Barbara Coors, and she spelled it with a K. And the guy goes, you spelt your name wrong. And she goes, I'm having a bad day. He goes, I don't know how. 
I've had many bad days. I don't always remember how to write my name. I've had a bad day. We had to run out of Market Street and run down the street like pussies. Then one time, like I would do it like on a daily. There was like a year or two where I had this friend that I had met by mistake through a friend, through a friend. It's not like I even grew up with him. And he's the one that told me about this scam. But he goes, you got to keep it fucking quiet because he was so... It was really, when I really went to effect with it was when I left North Bergen. When the people were looking for me and I owed a bunch of money, I went to Creskill, New Jersey. And I hid in Creskill, New Jersey. And that's when I really became good with it. He goes, don't use it in your neighborhood. Right. Don't use it on the buses. Use it in the city. In the city, nobody looks at your face and nobody fucking gives a fuck. And I, I became addicted to it. Like it became addicted to because oh, it. it's like unlimited everything you unlimited want. Unlimited everything, and then he started saying, "Can you get rid of travelers' checks?" And those were easy because you just had to write it out. Again, one out of ten people asked you for an ID in those days. You bumped into one moron that was, you know, really believed in the law and shit. Right. That said, "Can I get an identification with that?" And in touristy places, you could go nuts. You spend, listen, you're spending twenty dollars on a nine ninety nine t shirt. They know it, you know it. You're robbing me, I'm robbing you. Give me the fucking t shirt mm -hmm. and shut the fuck up. <laughs> You're gonna get the twenty for the fucking t shirt from the Amex people. Right. It was such right. a it was such a fucking rampant going on. Like and I didn't know people until I met this guy. And I would basically talk to him on the phone from Jersey, go to Harlem, pick up weed, and I'd meet him like in lower Manhattan. And we'd meet like by uh 59th and Broadway, and there used to be like a little bar in there, and we'd talk for an hour, and he'd bring people with him that this is what they did for a fucking living. They had, like, you know how people, what's that thing that you get a, uh, somebody and I sell you soap? We, we all sign up for that fucking Amway? company. Amway. <laughs> this was Amway for fucking credit cards. <laughs> like, this guy had 50 guys in Brooklyn and the Bronx working with credit cards. That he would refuel them with three or four credit cards every three days. And these guys' job was to go out and get merchandise. So I come to you and go, Vicky Pez, you want to design a nice studio, all right? You want microphones that are nice. Listen, these go for a thousand apiece. This, this, this. You want the computer, the speakers. It's 10G retail. I come back here tonight. You give me five grand cash. Fuck yeah, I'll give you five grand cash for brand new shit and boxes with warranties. What do you give a Frenchman's fuck? <laughs> Well, now you can't use the warranty with computers. Now they'll definitely catch you yeah. with the stolen merch. Well, even I mean, even the stores uh, back when when you're talking about like, would they even have cameras or the capability no. to record twenty four seven? No, I mean, no, 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 no. They're no. watching everything See, everyone today does would now. Be, the only way you could credit card fraud today is online. Oh yeah. But you yeah. have the problem with online is that. You have to set up different... Because I was thinking about it. You know, I'm a fucking criminal no matter what. Some nights I smoke a joint, I think about Poseidon. Some nights I smoke a joint, I think about fucking how somebody would do this stuff. Because I absolutely don't know. I would have to get somebody like Lee and, and like a foreigner. Yeah. Those motherfuckers. Like, I know there's Armenians in Glendale mm. that know how to get 200 credit cards off the computer in 10 seconds and just start buying shit. And sending it to warehouses where they don't have to sign for it. They just get dropped off and pray to God. I think that's how you would do it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because you still got to deliver it. Right. So all they got to do is wait for whoever signs and you arrest them. That's, yeah, at some point you have to go pick up this merchandise somewhere. Somewhere. So that's the only way I can think of doing it. But on a face-to-face -face no more at Sears or at... Uh, I went to the mall tonight. Uh, what's the name of the fucking dump? Anything. Any mall? Macy's? Yeah, like even Macy's. No fucking way. You use a credit card, you get away with it. They're going to find you nowadays. I think the odds are against you because that's what I feel. I feel because you can't buy that with fucking glasses and a funny fucking nose. <laughs> Everyone's had their, like, I've had my credit card stolen. Yeah, but look but, where they use it and how they use it. I guarantee they used it online. Uh, a couple a couple times they actually do try to do it in stores still. They still do try, but I don't think anyone ever looks for them. Do I, you? I don't think. Well, I think when you walk in the store, you have to see if the cameras are active. I, I think the only way I would use a card today is if Vicky Pazza worked at someplace, and yeah. I would go in there, and she'd go, listen, the cameras are off from 10 to 11, buy up some shit. Inside jobs. I grew up with a friend of mine that ended up being 
my first daughter's godmother, and she was a badass bitch. This bitch was a Jersey badass bitch. And she worked at Lord and Taylor and Ann David. Yeah. The shoe place. And her and I were goombas. I knew her boyfriend. I knew her mother. I knew her father. And her and I would sit on the porch and smoke a joint. And this is before I started doing business. She was telling me, her scam, how when shipment comes in, you take a pair of shoes out and say they're what's that word when food when clothes goes to Ross Dam uh, oh, uh, damaged correctly da oh, okay. irregular irregular so when a shipment of shoes would come in she'd get the most expensive shoes and say it broke and right. she'd take a pair of like when you went to her house she had rooms filled of three of all shoes she was that's 20, a dream come she true she was 21 years old at the time oh but everything they got that was really worth it it was damaged and they'd send her another box and no don't send it back we don't care throw it away and she would take a pair of shoes home she had been there since high school like as a stock clerk and just went through the ranks and when she got out of high school they said listen be an assistant manager two years in the chick quit to go somewhere else she took over so beside the bank cards we were getting we were also getting cards of people who were getting hit and you right. had to move the cards fast. So I would take them to her to see if they were stolen. Before I went out in the loose in the mall where she worked at, I would take the card to her, to her first. If the card was good, first thing we had to do was buy her a pair of shoes. <laughs> we'd buy her a dress, a pair of shoes from the joint, and then we'd walk through them. She'd walk me through the mall. She knew everybody at the mall that was on this. So they would say the same thing. Buy a pair, get what you want. But on the way, I'm going to ring 50 extra, and I'm going to take 50 cash from me. So everybody was getting paid. There was nobody getting upset. When the cops come, nobody knows nothing. Right. I, I don't remember what the guy looked like. He was fucking, I don't know, Spanish. And that's it. End the fucking story. You know, they have to send investigators after you to see uncontrolled, like a, they, they call it something, irregular business at your... Because a lot business, loss prevention because, or something? Yeah, because a lot of times Vicky Pez is in on it, too. Vicky Pez will say, wait, whoa, 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 wait, wait. So let's pretend you come in here once a week and buy something, but I don't sell it to you. You just ring my register, and you buy whatever the fuck you want, but I keep the product. Right. You know what I'm saying? You do that once a month. After three months, American Express is going to come in there and go, there's a lot of regular fucking right. activity coming out of your goddamn store. You know? <laughs> it's so weird, the shit you learn growing up in Jersey. Like, you wouldn't learn this dumb this is the most stupid information to have in your brain <laughs> but it's great to just have like, just like scams but it makes me more careful like well, it makes me they more say careful now it makes me more careful with my wife like I have one credit card for a computer you want to rob that credit card be my fucking guest you know what I'm saying yeah. knock yourself out it's the people who use a lot of credit cards like I, I think now about what's going on I don't know what's going on but man, there's a lot of fucking kinky shit on the computer. There's tons of kinky people trying to get you. And they'll get you. Yeah. They duplicate your bank info and your bank logo and they email you. And while you're doing it, you know something's not right. You're like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Log on to this and you log on to that. And they want everything. And you're like, this is too much. These people are fucking scams, you know? Yeah. Those fucking Africans that take your money that you adopted thirty million, that's the oldest scam in the book and people still buying into that shit. Like I've seen news segments or and, and shit where it's like the people that got scammed by like oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen those Nigerian yeah, prince esque yeah. thing. And it's it, it's it dumbfounds me that anyone at th this day and age, what is it this gotta be like twenty years now of the the old Nigerian but prince one, scam, right? I get three fucking ones a week from just the weirdest shit that if you can't tell they're a scam you have to shoot yourself right <laughs> like now like I know you how, almost yeah. deserve to be robbed right like now I know how they even come so I just don't even open them right like now you know what it says in the heading how they try to trick you but not really it's not like they're like you inherited a million dollars right they don't say that no more they say something like, into the account of Mr. Diaz, we have a discussion with you about an urgent matter. 
at first I was checking them because I don't know what the fuck my ex-wife is doing. Right. She's putting voodoo on me. And she got tapes from me fucking robbing credit card in the motherfucker in San Francisco. Do you ever get an email that is allegedly from someone you know in real life? Where it's like, you know, oh, hey, it, you know, um, hey, uh, you know, it, it, it's Joey Diaz. Um, I, I'm in England. I lost my passport. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it'll yeah, be yeah. like a whole story. I'm like, delete, bitch. Right. <laughs> but it's like, you'll know the person, like, really, they just tweeted from delete, like, Starbucks. Delete. If they're my friend, they call me up. <laughs> right, right. Fuck you. This Fuck tale, you. this wild tale. It is. I had an email from a friend of mine that asked me to buy steroids. <laughs> and I read it that morning. I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? Mm. I had to call him up and go, what the? Because I'm sorry I got hacked. <laughs> He's into steroids. They went into his account. Oh. Because they read your shit first. To try to make it believable. To try to make it believable. Right. Jesus They're method Christ. acting. Yeah, they're method. They read your shit first. <laughs> then they try to make it believable. And then you fall for it. You're like, what are you talking about? Let me call Joey. And then you're like, somebody just sent me an email. Saying, Joey, send me $5,000 right now. And I'm like, fuck you. I got one. I was trying to find it. I can't. I must have deleted it. Some guy was like, one of those African princes one, but saying I was a fan of your podcast. And I was like, <laughs> I was so excited. And what did he say? I thought he needed money. Like, I haven't, I haven't, <laughs> I, I was so, I was so dumbfounded. I just deleted it. But I was like, what is happening? They must had money that was for you. It, must, it was one of those two. You I have can... to pay a small fee to get it out and shit. <laughs> Listen, man, this is how they do it. If they send out 100 of those emails, two people are going to go for it. What about the one I saw on 60 Minutes? That one even more interesting. You get a call, from, and it's somebody from the IRS saying that you owe back taxes. And if you don't pay it within 24 hours, they're going to come over there and arrest you in front of your children and shit. That happened to my mother-in-law. And she got one of the calls. I, I got it too. I got one too. Right, really? the first year I couldn't pay my taxes in full, and I was petrified. I was like, oh. "They said, con they said contact your attorney," and I was like, "I don't have an attorney," and I was real nervous. But then my mom, <laughs> I could just see this fucking momo. Oh my god, I was petrified. Yeah, yeah. It was the first time I, I set up a payment. I was like, I set up a payment plan. They can't do this to me. And then I, I looked it up, and they said that like they'll never call you. They'll never do that. Yeah. So it was like, I calmed down, but it was like a scary half hour. At this point in life, and, and you hate to say this because you don't want to be negative towards people, but at this point in life, if you fall for one of those fucking scams, <laughs> you should be shot and hung. You should be ashamed <laughs> of yourself. Any phone scam, like shit like that, you know, it's so weird that <clears throat> when I first started dating my wife, we were going somewhere one day. And my wife's a really sweet girl, you know. She's not Jersey tough or nothing. She'll tell me to look at that picture on the wall or something, you know. And I could goof on it, but I don't. That's her world, and I respect it, and I love being with her, you know. And uh, I noticed something about her. I noticed that when homeless people and shit would talk to her, she would just keep walking straight. <laughs> and that made me like her even more because she's that nice that'll help you out. But she just didn't go for it. She just did not fucking go for it, you know? Yeah. And I asked her once, I go, you, I mean, you don't even break. And she goes, you know, man, I don't talk to nobody on the street. I learned a lesson a long time ago. If you want to stay, and it's really true. You don't need to talk to nobody. And nobody. Like, you just keep fucking walking. Unless they come up to you and you see the blood and the hole <laughs> from the gunshot, I can't help you. I don't know nothing. Let's walk down this alley. Let's do this. Listen, I don't know nothing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. No hablo. <laughs> no hablo. No hablo. No hablo. And you just keep fucking yelling and run the fuck away. You know, you don't even stop. Like, there's no stopping because they, some way or another, they involve your feelings. They've been doing this all day. Mm -hmm. They do this 30 times a day. They're going to get one person. There used to be people, like, uh, in North Jersey, like... Um, you know the White Castle in Newark? <laughs> I don't know if you ever... I don't think I ever went to that particular the, one. There was, there was a White Castle. It was just, it was so close to Belleville. The convenience of it outweighed the, you know, it's not the best area of town. Um, and I would be a teenager in my, in my neon, like that was my first car was like a neon, like this fucking, oh, it was so shitty. So 
you would know going to this White Castle, like in the in your car in the drive through, there's gonna be a dude. There's gonna be a dude who's gonna linger all day in between where you order and where you pick up the food. So even as as like an eighteen year old girl who, if my oh my god, if my parents knew like what you know, but you drive around Newark like this is this is what you do. So it's like. I would have to know if I'm going to go to that White Castle. All right, if the meal's like $5, really I'll need like 7 or 8 because I know I pretty much have to pay off this guy to not get any shit while I'm getting my food. <laughs> that was just a part of things sometimes. How sad is that? It isn't it How crazy? How sad is that sometimes I'll pull up to a 7-Eleven, I'll stay in my car and get the fuck out of there because there's not one homeless dude. There's five of them. Mm-hmm. And you know what, man? They're all able. I got a heart. I really get it. I was that guy fucking 15 years ago. But I figured out how to get a fucking suit and get a briefcase and walk into buildings and rob penny change or whatever the fuck it was. Right. But to stand out there as a young male adult. And listen, this was the story. It was like it was, and it was always the same story because yeah, I go there all the time. Thousand stories. I'm that. with my. I have my three nephews are inside. We ran out of gas. My car's here. Like it was the same story every fucking time you went to that White Castle. And then like there'd be like liquor stores where there's a guy. Like a lot of the businesses like would have the dude, and it'd always be the same dude every time with the same variation of this original tale that's happening in that, that was, moment. They were running that scam on Burbank and Lancashire. I saw them running two times in two months, and it was hilarious <laughs> because uh, she came up to me the second time also. And I wish that you would look at me and look at my face and go, you know what? That guy's heard a few fucking stories. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to go up to him with that story. I'm going to either fucking blow him or give him a good fucking story. But she came up to me with the kids in the truck and the husband, and then he had to fill it up because they were trying to get out of town. And something didn't. It wasn't right. I go, you know what? I got an ATM card. I just filled up my card. I can't help you. And then I went there a month later at the same time. I wasn't even going in there. I drove by, but I recognized the truck. And again, she was looking for money. You know. Have you ever seen that guy on Woodman and right off the 101? He was in. He always wears like a full uh, denim outfit, and he has a sign that he's like his house is going to be foreclosed on. He's been there for like three years. So what's a nickel going to fucking do for you? I don't know. <laughs> your foreclosure, you haven't paid your rent in 90 fucking days, plus bank fees and shit, and you're out here getting nickels. I ain't giving you a dick, cocksucker. You should have planned ahead. You should have planned ahead, you fuck. And nah, bro, I got a lot of heart, man. I donate a lot of shit, and I try to help people out, but four young dudes, my, not even. I'm 53. I can't pick up a brick no more. I'm talking about four young men. There's that thing. Larry even went to that thing last week. He worked for one of the fucking uh, committees or some shit. But there's still that thing where you go and you shape up and you have to do shit work. But it's fucking work. It's better than staying in front of the fucking 7-Eleven irritating people. Then there's that lady who goes to the 7-Eleven where where I pulled up with the headlights (laughs) and she gave me the finger and told me to go fuck myself. And then Lee tried. I go, Lee, give her a dollar. She wouldn't take it from Lee. (laughs) Really? She wouldn't take it. She's in like a wheelchair that you have to like blow to keep moving. Oh my it's like God. The, it's like the worst thing you've ever seen. It is the saddest fucking thing. The Seven Eleven in my area is. I got to do a documentary. <laughs> I got to show people the one on fucking Magnolia and Tahunga. They're gonna kill somebody in there. Like I, I, you don't need to be a fortune teller. You don't need to be a swami. Just go in there at eleven o'clock. Lee and I go to all of them. The best one is the one where we go late night and we stand outside and talk. But there's a Chinese sushi place two doors down that stinks like shit. <laughs> you stand there and it's that old fish heads and fucking. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, and the wind's blowing off the 170. <laughs> and you're trying to eat a fucking piece of chips. We usually go get chips, diet soda, and we mm-hmm. talk shit for 15 minutes. But it's down the block from the cop station. So there's no action in there. There's, I've never gone in there. And there's no disrespect at all. The owners are in the daytime. They're very nice, and whatever. They're uh, ISIS, but they're nice ISIS. They don't bother nobody. <laughs> they, they, these two guys are great. The one guy's very good looking. Nicest. Yeah, they're nicest <laughs> ISIS. The one guy's very good looking. He has a hairdo. He's always on top of it. They're always on the phone. <laughs> the all three of those guys that rotate on Burbank and Colfax are gentlemen. 
Then you take that party to Lower Canyon and Chandler. That's ISIS. That's co- they even killed somebody there already. Oh my in the god! Daytime. A homeless guy stabbed the owner with a bottle. Where there's blood, there's blood. I'm telling you, you go in there at night. I took Lee in there. They had the music blasting. They don't make eye contact. Mm-hmm. There's not one 7-Eleven that you go on to that they have, oh, yeah, blasting. <laughs> blasting. I think someone must have complained because I've been trying to go. I went in last night at like 1030. It wasn't on. No. Maybe they must do But at really night, late. they all have the headgear. <laughs> in the daytime, they don't have the headgear. At night, they bust out the helmets. <laughs> They're ready for fucking war in there, Jack. And this one over here is getting really fucked up. The one on Magnolia and Tahunga is my favorite. There used to be a Mexican woman in the daytime, Maria. She lived down the block from me. I like Maria. She's got a nice kid. Everybody's decent. <laughs> how, you, how far did you get into her life? <laughs> on, I don't fuck around with people. I got a personal relationship with my 7-Eleven. You understand me? I'm loyal. How many times I got to tell you that shit? What, whatever happened to the, uh, the Indian uh, bodybuilder? Remember him? Yeah, from Do America. you remember him? We had that guy under control, Vicky Pezza. They shipped him out when ISIS came in. No. That was a brand new training camp we got him <laughs> Remember, you've gone in there with me at night. There's an old guy in there. That's oh, yeah, him. with the beard? That guy. Is he ISIS Lee? He's the leader because yeah, I think he has like the little, he has different color coding on his beard sometimes. Yep. 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 Does that mean something? I'm not fucking with you guys. I-, I wouldn't lie to anybody about this shit. I've made little observations. The Indian guy that was there before was a bodybuilder that started doing steroids. Okay. A little fucking, uh, a little ISIS dude, but he was a <laughs> sweetheart. I could go in there when there was 30 people online with Lee, and I'd make eye contact with him. Like, well, give me a crab. And before he went <laughs> to put the hot dog on the bun, he would stop and fucking pose for me. Oh, oh I had him under control. Look at the oil, look at the air, control out. I had him under control, that poor little fucking dude. And one day, him and his whole crew disappeared. So wait a minute. What are you suggesting here? You're suggesting that they got big and buff? and then No, there was only one guy that got big and buff. (laughs) And I heard they sent them all to Venice. That whole crew got sent to Venice. And they came in with a new crew. And the crew chief leader at... Magnolia and Tahunga is definitely ISIS. <laughs> okay, he's definitely ISIS. I don't know about his little minions over there. They're very nice there. The traffic they get there is very bad. Down the block is a uh, bus station. It's a bus station, and then like and the then across RV. the street there's a park, and people live in RVs. And in the middle of the night, people live in the park. The cops shake that park down every night. But you could Rambo that motherfucker. Put a blanket <laughs> over your head and shit with grass on it, and you get away with it. They think it's like a grass pile. But they come out of that fucking thing. There's nights I've been in there, and people have gone in there, fucking shoplifted it, and showed it to the dudes and run out. And they're like, what are we going to do? We're not going to chase this poor kid. We're not going to get nowhere. We're just going to get a line. And what am I going to do? Chase him and get beat up by four guys, and then they'll call the cops, and the cops come. <laughs> And they'll check the cameras, and they'll check for them in the area. Right. But that takes three fucking hours, you know. But I've been in there with some wild... I remember that's where the hooker was. The hooker we tortured, that I tortured for like a year. Yeah, She yeah. disappeared. It's weird. It's, it's a weird... That's a weird 7-Eleven. <laughs> that's a weird 7-Eleven. So the one on Chandler, they already stabbed the owner. He's dead. At 11 in the fucking morning. It was closed for two weeks. They had to close Laurel Canyon. The Seven oh Eleven on Laurel Kane and Chandler, I knew two years ago was ISIS because I used to go in there before I went to the store, and I'm like, I've been to a lot of Seven Elevens in my day. This one's a little fucked up. Here. <laughs> they don't treat you right. They don't make eye contact. They're always on the phone yelling and fucking. I'm gonna get out, and then they're fucking just giving you a change. <laughs> they don't say thank you. They don't offer you a bag. <laughs> they're just fucking rude. But I like the other one because we had the one Hindu under control in there. He was bodybuilding, so I chose that one. But the one by Burbank, like I said, is next to the police station, but it's down the block from that C-grade sushi. I ate that three times, and I made it. I never went back there again. One night in the middle of the night, I had cold shakes, and I woke up and I go, I ate that three times and didn't get sick. I ain't going back there again. It's like a three-item lunch thing. The Philly roll wasn't bad, but you could tell the salmon either was a week old it was right before they God. fucking go bad, but it wasn't bad. The soup right on was, the cusp? Yeah, teetering. right on the cusp. It's if you, and they gave you a chicken cutlet fried and something. 
I don't know what I was Friday. I know I got a pimple on my nose the next fucking day in the middle of the afternoon and shit. <laughs> my 7-Eleven is so much different than you guys in Simi Valley. Can I tell you about, like, just... How like, nice is it? My, my, my biggest problem was... Um, during the day shift, and I'm usually a nighttime person. I'm usually like midnight, two in the morning, 7-Eleven. And that's always the guy in the Bluetooth. But uh, during the day, sometimes there was like an, an overly friendly cashier where I was like, I don't know if I could handle all this small talk. I was just going to say, Joey's very friendly. You and I are both kind of like loners. Like, and I, I knew it when you said he's the guy with the Bluetooth. Joey knows it's Maria with the kid who plays baseball. Right, right. And we're like, it's the guy with the Bluetooth. <laughs> I like him. He doesn't talk to me and bother me when I'm eating my snacks. This is how I want it to go. I go up to the register. They, I'm going to ask for Marvel Light 100's two packs. They already know it. Like, we have that relationship. Hi, how are you doing? Facial recognition. Mm. Nice. Nice relationship. But there was one guy who would take it to a level that it was kind of weird. He was kind of like young, nerdy, nerdy looking white guy. Um, white dude? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the only white dude that worked there at all. Right. They got to have a fucking, they got to have like a, whatever they call it. it. Yeah. It, it's, What's it's that when they have black people? Token. token. No. The token white. Oh. Well, you know when they. Oh, affirmative action? Yeah. They got <laughs> Seven Eleven got affirmative action. We, we gotta hang, we gotta hire a white dude or a Mexican from time That's to what time. It, you know, they always yeah. look for a Mexican with Hi, a beard. Hi, how are you today? And they then look, yeah, they look for a Mexican that can pass as an Arab. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> they make him get a beard. Come back when you get a beard. We like you. Look. Have you considered a turban? <laughs> that was my biggest Seven Eleven problem. Um, this this young this young white man is too nice. I don't know if I could keep this up. How nice is Simi Valley? Tiring. Every time I come up and see you, I'm like, I would love to live in Simi Valley. I love living in Simi Valley. I love it. It's it's nothing happens. Perfect. I want something to happen. I drive down the 118 for 10 minutes on a trafficless freeway, and boom, I'm in LA, and then I'm in the mix of everybody else. I love Simi Valley. Is that lame? No, no, I, th no, I feel no, like no. I've lost my edge. Simi Valley is where the cops live. They beat up those black people. They call it yeah, the Yeah, we don't like to neighbor. talk about that. You don't? I didn't want to bring that Are up. Are still up there? Well, well, did you guys watch The People vs. O.J. Simpson yes. when yeah. it was on? Oh, my God. It was like the worst PR for Simi Valley ever. They kept bringing it up. The one guy in the one scene was like, I live in Simi Valley and I love it. And like everyone was glaring at him. And I'm like, do we live in a racist town? I didn't my know. My cousin and her husband live in Simi Valley. And they have a very nice house. He's a cop. Oh. A highway patrol. Okay. And he said that his whole block are cops. Like the whole block. Like his captain's down the block. His lieutenant's three blocks away, you know. I never even knew about it till the OJ thing at the Simi Valley. But I like any of those places. You know, I'm always scared that if I move there, then I get a job in Hollywood and I had to drive every right. day. Right, yeah, yeah. That's what you're scared of. Right. Like, I love to live in Simi Valley if I had to stay in Simi Valley. It's like I love living in the valley if I don't have to go over that fucking hill for anything. Once I got to go over the hill, I start getting a little ratty <laughs> that night before. Unless it's for something I really want to do. But if right, it's for yeah. something stupid, I ain't going yeah. anymore. Like, I am over that it's drive. It's so... <laughs> I am over that drive. People do not understand. It's like when I go to Jersey. I love New Jersey. I love New Jersey with all my heart. I had a lot of fun in New Jersey and a lot of great memories. Like, when I moved out here, like, New Jersey was not on the map. Like, I still remember 1997 talking to this girl that was going to type up my resume and bio and get everything together for me on the computer for $250. And what she was was a PR girl that worked for a firm on Wilshire Boulevard, mm -hmm. and she dated a comedian. This has to be Close to 20 years ago. And I'll never forget this. We're at her house. My friend's there. We're smoking pot. She's typing. Like, she was great at all that stuff. And I, and I remember her coming over to me like I had cancer. And she goes, can I talk to you about something? We shouldn't put New Jersey on there. And I go, why not? And she goes, New Jersey? It seems so small. She goes, where did you grow up? I go, well, when we came from Cuba. We lived on 205 West Day. And she goes, leave her right there. Say New York City. Yeah. So, you know me, dog. You're going to put New York City on something? Uh, I yeah. take it. I, well, at that point, I'm just trying to get work, guys. Right. So if they wanted to be New York, so be it. Fine. But you know what that fucking girl put on there? Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> and that resume went everywhere. And one of my friends got a hold of that resume. 
and called me from New Jersey. He goes, hey, man, I got a problem here. He goes, I saw somewhere. I really, until this, I still talk to him. I still talk to him a lot, once a week, twice a week. And he said to me, hey, man, I saw that, uh, that Hell's Kitchen. What the fuck are they talking about? And I remember saying it to him, like, the publicity, this publicity lady said not to put New Jersey. Once the Sopranos hit, that, then it was, was all it. over. Then it was cool to be from Jersey. Mm -hmm. Everybody asks you stupid fucking creepy questions about New Jersey. And shit. <laughs> if you're from Jersey, everybody assumed you were in the mafia. Your uncle was in the mafia. It was so weird how one TV show, even though Pete, even though Springsteen has always publicized, he's from Jersey. Yeah. And I thought about it years later. I'm like... She cannot. He's not around no more. He he tapped out. So she she was probably a bum too. And I always think about what that fucking mud is doing. <laughs> like I, I thought about it years later. I go wait a second. Bon Jovi at that time publicized he was from Jersey. Right. Everybody knows fucking the chairman of the motherfucking board <laughs> is from fucking Jersey and motherfucking uh, Springsteen's from Jersey. Okay. So what the fuck are you talking about? She's probably living in Jersey now. She's probably living in Jersey now. Fucking, uh, who the hell knows? But it's so weird how the the, the, the Jersey image has changed in yeah. 10 years. Like, now it's hip to be. You know, I heard they built up Red Bank. Red Bank's Red, really nice. I was, I was just going to mention Red Bank because I was there. Um, and it, yeah, it is. The whole all Main Street and everything, or, it, or Broad Street. Is that like what it they is? Want, I heard they wanted to turn it into a place so people didn't have to go into the city. Well, <laughs> like, good luck know, with that. Yeah, no, but, like shit like that. Entertainment. Yeah. I heard they were going to build film studios out there and uh, I mean, that'd be, just a lot. Really Every nice. time I go to New Jersey, it changed so much yeah. over the years. And my sadness is that I go to Jersey for three days. Like one of the times I, I took a train, which in my world, I thought it was a blast. I've always liked that train from down the shore to either Hoboken and then you switch and go to Grand Central mm -hmm. or I don't know how it really works anymore but I would take that train all the time into the city it went from fucking uh, Route Eggs at 17 my buddy lived on uh, Nolan Road I would walk to the corner and he would drop me on you know something where you couldn't walk to the tra uh, tent and the fucking buses would come all the time there and trains mm -hmm. there were trains every 15 minutes man and you just got on the train did you get the ticket and then go on the train? Then the guy punched the hole in it. No, no. You were, you, that's that's that train there. That he, they still have that in Boston. It's okay. called the commuter rail. It's like an actual train. It goes like all all around the the state. That was fun. Oh, it's great. To me, that's fun. I don't trust this train system. It's not bad. I don't know why. The red line is not bad. It isn't fucking bad. What, the one here? The, the yeah. metro? Yeah, I don't or? trust the fucking earthquake value. And I don't yeah. trust the train in New York yeah. anymore. A bomb under there, you're fucking done, Jack. If yeah. you're on 49, if you're on 72nd Street waiting for the train and that bomb goes <laughs> off on 86, you're getting done. This train, I, I never trust. I never feel hunky-dory. You know, I grew up in the old trains with graffiti and people getting stabbed on the train. <laughs> I, I, the best was every train you'd get on in those days, in the 80s, the train would open, people would empty. Lee, listen to me. You're going to love this, Lee. Oh, on boy. demand. This was on demand. Every time you took the train, you saw this guy twice a day. The train would open, empty would train out. The new people get back on the train the doors closed the guys the guy goes keep your hands away from the door because they're about to close right after that word you'd hear the front door open like that door in the front da that somebody comes walking and some guy would come walking in and he'd go excuse me excuse me i need your attention ladies and gentlemen i'm put a hat on the floor but let me tell you what's going on in my life right now. <laughs> he would fucking go into this speech about he had cancer, he had HIV, oh I got a tumor, I got a fungi toe, I got liver disease. All of it? All of this shit. Oh, no. And he would sit there with a hat and nobody would give him a fucking nothing. What? And then he would go to the next train and the door wouldn't close and you'd hear him doing the <laughs> same fucking speech in there. And, and, and much like the foreclosure that you mentioned earlier this is another what's a nickel gonna do situation yeah, no, for sure i don't know anymore like i said i'm very generous i know who's bullshitting me you mm -hmm. know who's bullshitting your life sometimes you don't even give a fuck you just go you know what give this guy a dollar he's out here by himself it's cold whatever the fuck 
like the ones I saw today. I went to 7-Eleven today. <laughs> there was a dude with a Dodger hat standing there asking for donations. Then there was three of them by the fucking tank, by the gas tank. And they'd yell over at you. Hey, give me a fucking dime. Like, hey, you got a quarter to spare? I got a whole fucking cup of change in the middle of my glove compartment there, that little thing. Mm -hmm. I will give you. If you ask me the right way, if you walk up to me like a man and go, listen, I haven't eaten in fucking three days. Look at me. Can you help me out? I'm trying to get a job. I don't have a job. I'll help you out, man. It's those guys that are just waiting there and they get 10 nickels and they figure out how to smoke crack and they go into a hole and it's on me. Like, I'm supposed to fucking feel bad because I don't give them a dollar. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them, motherfuckers. I learned when I lived in Boston that you can't, you have to like kind of scout the area out. And you can't do it if, like, you're going to see them every day. Because I made that mistake once. I, like, I got off at the same train stop every day for three years. And you give the and you gave I the gave it to one guy. And he, that was it. After for, like, a few weeks. And I was like, God, I, I got off at a different stop for a couple of days just to, like... <laughs> to lose them? Lose them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're great in Boston. There's one guy who yells all day. And, like, he yells with a hoarse voice. Anybody got any spare change? He just walks up and down. Fuck you. There's, there's a woman... In Cambridge, who like the IRS is going after because she made over a hundred grand panhandling. What? That's more money than I made. Listen, man, if you slick it up, you can make a lot of money. <laughs> if you slick it up and attack prime time on the train or a bus in the morning, you can make a lot of money. There was a guy thirty years ago that would dress up in a suit and walk up and down Times Square. And say, excuse me, sir, I just got mugged. Can I get ten dollars to get home? And everybody would give him ten, twenty, thirty dollars because he had a suit on. Right. Different game, clean shaven, nice hair, manicured. I just been robbed. I don't know what to do. The cops can't help me. I have no money to get home. I live in Long Island. All I need to do is get ten dollars from me. He would start at eight in the fucking morning, seven thirty. That's a good one. That's a good one. By lunchtime, three, four fucking hundred. Six days a week, that's twenty four hundred. That's close to 10 G's a fucking month. Jesus. And he would what switch it up from Grand Central to Times Square to, to, to other parts yeah, of the you city. Can't have, where, you can't have the this same commuter like seeing you. Yeah. I remember 2020 had him on. And he would wear nice suits and nice hair. And it just, it just, hey, listen, man. Like I said, I'll help anybody. I had that guy close to my house, the black dude that was a genius, wouldn't take my money. Wouldn't take my money. I asked him 10 times, please take this 20, get something to drink. It's 90 degrees. Out. Nah, brother, I'm fine. He would go over there. You ever drive on Chandler now and there's a bridge? You ever see that bridge, Lee? We see it all the time and there's graffiti and there's always somebody out there jerking off. <laughs> they're like a 13 year old in the back moaning and they're jerking off in the front seat there, but nobody ever stops there. By that wall there, there's a fence. And he lives down there. He goes behind that fence and he, and he set up like a compartment. The cops don't bother him, nothing. And he gets exercised there. It's amazing. And it's his. And nobody fucks at this black dude. And he made it so he could push his shopping cart back there. And he's got like hubcaps and books in there and magazines. And somebody gave him like a thing to watch movies on. It's pretty brilliant. He's I respect those setup. guys. Yeah. And I offered him money a couple times. I would take the baby on a stroll, and I'd see him and talk to him, and he told me what he used to do. He had a family and shit. He wasn't drunk. He was coherent. Wow. I dropped off clothes one time. I went there two days later. It was gone, you know, so he took the clothes and right. stuff. I've always wanted to talk to some of those people who live in the RVs because I've never seen that before. I've seen homeless people, and it's terrible, And I, but I, I feel like that's a different, that's a different... Yeah, but those RV people... They're not homeless by choice. Exactly. Like, I guarantee they're having a great time. Yeah. I had a girlfriend who had an RV, dog. One day this bitch told me, I'm, I'm getting an RV. There's an RV camp in, uh, where, where uh, Henry Hill used to live in Seattle, Ren Renton, Renton, Washington. Mm -hmm. This place was tremendous, guys. It was like 100 a week. To park the RV? You took showers inside. There was a pool, there was a weightlifting thing, there was a dry cleaner, there was a restaurant, there was a movie theater. Are you fucking crazy? That there was a post office, there was a bank. There was a whole world in there. A whole little community, a, a whole, whole RV little community. community. And you backed in your RV, they had different spots. 
if you want to be close to the fucking all the mall or if you want to be 50 yards away or 100 yards away I was a comic you know I, I didn't have any money I, didn't, I had a car but all I did was do comedy then and, I, and she asked me she goes if you could behave yourself you can live here not snort coke and shit so I said ah let's give it a try it was a great two or three months we had up there. It was great. I'd wake up in the morning, jump in the pool. Yeah. We'd get out. There was steam baths. They had a sauna. I, you could, they had, like, the fucking shampoo in there. You could shave. And then you fucking went to the restaurant. And you had breakfast. They had two eggs, bacon. Nice. I mean, Lee, fucking nice. I'm telling you. Now, that sounds like fun, but these people are, like, living. Right. They Well, listen, that's a party over there, Lee. Right. You think so? <laughs> that's a party over there because, okay, so. I don't know if they're homeless necessarily because I remember I used to do kettlebells over there. Right, yeah. And I would drive by there and it's the same people every day that just move it there. And some people are out. Some people park it there and go to a job, I think. Yeah, I, I think some people will just live there, but like, and it gets even crazy. And then they get back there. Remember, they could leave it there till 10 at night. Then uh, they have to move it somewhere. If you go there right now, there's no, there's nothing there. Really? You have to, by law. Go there not. right now. On the way home, go that way. You can't park up by the park no more at night. I Only no this, idea. by the residential area you can park, but no, those trailers gotta move at night, Jimmy Boy. You can uh, park in Walmart, right? Isn't that le isn't that like a thing? Walmart yeah. lets you park RVs or anything. I think people talk about it when you're like driving cross country to park in Walmart parking lots, but Only right now you're uh, you get divorced, you lose your house, you know, you don't really know what you want to do. You look at the paper, there's an RV for sale for fucking 10 grand that you could, that's ready to go. The engine's fucking strong, it's got air conditioning, it's got direct TV. Oh, I'm already sold. Yeah. Listen to me, yeah, you know, and you go, you know what, let me give this a shot. And you know what, Lee? I gotta tell you something. You could put a lot of money away if you could do it for three years and figure out the ins and outs, how to cook, have a friend that cooks. You could sleep there two nights a week. You sleep in your RV. You got TV, but it's have to have air conditioning. Like Kate, when Kate Quigley, Quigley came on, she had an idea. She goes, "I want to move to the beach by myself. You're gonna get stabbed and fucking <laughs> raped." <laughs> Don't take a fucking genius to tell you that. <laughs> But, you know, if you guys, whatever, you didn't want to work and you wanted to try something, it's not a bad fucking life for six months, man. I think I could do it for a short amount of time. They have kitchens. Listen, you're not going to cook manigot yeah, and right, fucking right. steak pizza roll and fucking <laughs> the meal of the seven dishes you Christmas Eve. You can eat Eve. up some chicken, though. You, you can, can make yeah. soup. You can bring cold cuts Grilled in. Grilled cheese. You can make ziti. You can make salads. You can make protein shakes. You have to get a generator. You know, uh, it's not a bad life. For uh, Like I said, I did it, and I'm a fucking picky fuck. It wasn't bad because of the situation. We had the one where you could take showers in there. I mean, yeah. you have eight minutes to take a fucking shower. But that, that where you were parking, it seems amazing. Yeah. So f fuck those showers. No, I know. Right. We didn't use those showers, but... Listen, man, God, you know, a couple of years ago, people lost their homes, foreclosure, with all that shit that went down with mortgages. Yeah. That was the easiest way out, to get an RV. You know, and they, you know, you know where Felicia lives down there? Right, yeah. If you keep going down and you make a right, you'll see five or six of them over there at night. There's spots all around here that you pull up with your RV, you keep your mouth shut, you bring a sandwich in, you watch your TV, you go to bed. Nobody says nothing to you. Right. But you can't be at that park. Did you see that on the East Coast? I didn't. I don't, rem I don't remember it. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't. was too young and I didn't look for it and I didn't really. That's also, that also could be true that yeah. I didn't notice it. Yeah. No, I didn't really know. I so. mean, there were. I, I remember there being mo mobile homes, trailer parks, things like that. But no, I don't remember. Uh, tons you of have RVs. The, I know the, uh, my brother lives in an RV that they just made into a home. You, you know those things? Yes. He lives in Delaware where they, they get an RV, they put two of them together, they weld them. Yes. They get a good toilet system, like it's a good toilet system. They give you a backyard. They give you a fucking front steps. They give you a, I don't know if they give you a garage. 
And it's an RV it that's designed to be a home. And that wasn't bad. I went to visit my brother. That wasn't bad. They had a pool in the back. Couldn't be that fucking bad, you know? Yeah. I want a pool so fucking bad. Like, to me, to have a pool in my yard, like a, an in-ground pool, that would be the ultimate. The I, ultimate thing I want An in-ground in pool, really? Yeah. Yeah, just a dig around pool. I mean, we, like we have, a, we rent a house. It's, I don't own the house, but it's a nice house, and I've been there a lot of years. Um, I always say like, oh, I never ever want to leave this house. But the truth is, if another house came along that had an in ground pool in the backyard, to me, it's like, oh, that's it. That's <coughs> Would you it. swim every day? In in my head, I think I'd swim every day. Whether whether I would actually go through with that, I don't know. But I would love to. Yeah, in yeah, in my head, I go out in the morning, smoke a cigarette. Go in the pool. Maybe just hang by the pool. Maybe type by the pool. Do my work by the pool. How nice would it be to get up, drink a cup of coffee, go on social media, do all your work on social media, go outside, smoke a joint, finish a cup of coffee, jump in the motherfucking pool. Once mm-hmm. you got some momentum before breakfast, yep. do 10 laps. Is it heated out. or not? Huh? Is it a heated pool? Yeah, yes, sure. Yes, in this fantasy, but it's when, absolutely When you heated. wake up, you you press the button, and you give it 45 minutes, you jump in that motherfucker, you do 10, 20 laps, brother, you get out, you run right into the shower, you wash your monkey, you put your clothes on, you eat breakfast, and you fucking go out in the world like a savage. You just did 20 fucking laps in the pool. You know, you started your morning with an hour in the pool. You know, your body's on fire. <laughs> How great would it be? Yeah, that, I like pools too. I, we have a pool, but they shut it down. We oh, still got really? a yard, but the pool is is done. You know, I mean, it would have been a lot more fucking dough if I got a pool. I don't need no fucking pool. Right, right. If I ever get enough money to buy a house, I love a pool, a nice lap pool with you know. Oh. Felicia Michaels has a tremendous pool. Oh, in really? Yard. And they've gotten it in maybe five times. No, no. Heated, long for laps, a jacuzzi They don't go in, in that back. thing? Oh, my God. When you when it's in front of you, it's amazing how, okay, you could buy swings for your child. Right. And they have a horse in the back and a fucking tree house. They'll do it three or four times, then they'll neglect it. <laughs> they go to some other kid's house, you can't get them out of the fucking tree house, you know? Right. You can't get them off the fucking swings. You got to swing in your backyard. That's the problem <laughs> with that stuff. That right. Once you have it, you just go, ah, okay, I have a pool, been there, done that. Well, even when you're like, would you swim every day? And it's like, well, I imagine I Are would you swim a swimmer? every day. Um, I mean, no, not especially. I just, I love to swim. Do I like going in swim? the ocean. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, how to yeah, swim. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You jump in the pool in the morning. Before I got locked up, a buddy of mine that worked at UPS was like, yeah. I go, how do you stay so fucking yoked? And he goes, I got three kids. I, I can't, I, I, I got time to lift twice a week for 30 minutes. I got to do it when my kids are in the shower or something, he said. And he goes, but the rest of the time, I will swim. And he talked me into going to a master swimming program. And I'll tell you, jumping in the pool first thing in the morning, there's a thousand things you could do first thing in the morning. I mean, getting up, getting a protein shake, smoking a little toots loots. I would ride my bike there because it was four blocks away, and I, I knew how to get there without even messing with cars, you know. So I'd get my blood going a little bit that way. I'd get in, take my shorts off. I'd have a, under, a fucking bikini on already. <laughs> and you jump in, and she'd blow a whistle and make you do laps or pulls or just kicks. And when you got out of that pool, your body feels completely fucking different. I would love to have a heated pool now where I could go in there at 7 to 7.45 to show. Because I was doing it at the YMCA in, in Welland in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. They got the big pool, which is cold. But they got the heated pool in the back. That's 90 degrees, and it's empty at 6. So I would go steam, sauna, and then jump in that motherfucker oh, and do 30 man. minutes. And then go back, steam, sauna, throw some eclectic. Epileptical? Uh, no. Eucalyptic. Oh, oh eucalyptus. eucalyptus. I would go to I would go to fucking the health food stores and buy a container of eucalyptus. Oh shit. And I would sneak it into the YMCA and put it on the pipes and just sit there and breathe and fucking it was tremendous. I love all that shit. I if anything I wish I had now I wish I had a a steam. Wow. Like a fitz, like that I could go in there and put hot water and Get the top layer of fucking bullshit out of your skin every right, morning. Right. 
I wish I had one of those. That oh, I that like would those. Be fucking awesome and if, too. And if it's yours, you can go in that balls ass yeah, naked yeah. With, with ass sweat and, and burn the hemorrhoids <laughs> off your muffler. Just sit on the fucking bar like grill it. <laughs> like I grilled my hemorrhoid and shit. <laughs> You mean the little hot bar that you're supposed to get the steam from? You're going to sit on your... <coughs> it's a finger speed. <coughs> it's a finger fucking speed sleep. <coughs> the other thing I always wanted and I finally got was a pool table. Uh, we finally like have a pool table in our house where like you leave into my house you know the di- the dining room or what should be a dining room is now the pool table room yeah that's fucking it's like oh but we won't have a dining room fuck it who cares everything's gone pool table now takes up everything I just took out my dining room table my mom thought I was crazy I was like I've sat on it like twice never used it like why am I gonna have a table I'm just gonna sit we're gonna watch TV anyways and by dining room table by dining room table I mean a like six foot folding table from Home Depot with like a tablecloth over it by dining room table I mean a $70 table from Ikea that was an unfinished wood right in in an apartment it wasn't a huge loss yeah no I wasn't losing much it's so weird guys I gotta make a confession to you guys okay when me and Terry got together we had the one bedroom apartment there was really no kitchen so we ate in the living room like savages (laughs) <laughs> and we always kept saying when we move into the next place, we gotta have a limit. And then we moved into the valley, and again, we had the kitchen, and there was a living room, but there was really no space like to break it up into a, <laughs> di- a mock dining room. One of the best things about this place that we moved into is we have a mock dining room. And I'm about to tell you guys something. We moved in there September first. It's just September first. I make it a point that we sit at the table. Mercy says prayers, and we eat, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Tonight, we had two sad bread hot dogs. That's it, two sad bread hot dogs. We, we, went, we went to Baby, we went to the Disney store, and we fucked around, and then we came home, and my wife goes, I feel bad, I don't have dinner. I go, I'll make a protein shake. She goes, I got a sad bread hot dog for you. They got them now. So she made me two sad breads. She cut up some onions with some fucking mustard. Oh, wow. And even that, I, we sat yeah. down, and Mercy said prayers, and... Then we ate because she goes to the Catholic school, not a Catholic school, but a Christian school. They okay. don't say our father. Who are, no, no. What's the Catholic one? Bless us, our Lord. What we are about to eat from your bounty from Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay. We don't say that one. We say something else. They don't do the sign of the cross, but I do. I always dread, you know, that's the way I was raised for years. My mother was a fucking nutcase and she drank and stuff. But there was one thing for sure at my home that kept the house together was except for her she could do whatever the fuck she wanted she'd talk she'd eat standing up but I was raised to sit down right. and, and eat and and it was just me and my mom and my stepdad so it got kind of fucking boring after a while and then things happen and you evolve but even the homes I lived in after that I saw that people weren't respecting that anymore you know people think I'm a fucking dick because I don't work on Sundays and way before the baby came, way before the baby came, I hated Sundays. I always, I liked working comedy Sundays, but it got to a point when, when I met my wife that you left on Tuesday and you didn't come back till Monday morning. Mm-hmm. And I didn't mind being away. I'm trying to make a living and I'm trying to become a better comic. But Sunday, you sit there all day, watch football. At this time, I could be sitting with my girlfriend. We could be going to the farmer's market or just... that That's her time, you know? Yeah. So at that point in my life, like 2003, I decided that I wasn't going to work Sundays no more, no matter what was going on. And number two, that we were going to try to have a dinner and sit on Sundays because that's the whole thing that I think we're missing right now. Yeah. You know, even my fucked up upbringing on Sundays, we'd watch like... Animal Kingdom and, and the Wide World of Disney, or, or and you watch that fucking dude that used to do this shit on Channel ABC on Sunday nights. You know, it was just white people on the show going like this with <laughs> that music, and they would sing quartets and shit. But that's what it meant to be an American to me when I came from Cuba at the time was to watch those shows. That's how I became an American. You know, all Mutual Omaha was a show about animals on NBC that went on at 6 and at 7 it was fucking Wide World of Disney so you on Sunday nights you always sat with your family and watched Disney well Disney don't give a fuck they replaced it with football so the gambling (laughs) fucking addicts could get their fucking fix on Sundays you know 
but that's one thing I've done since I moved into this home that we sit now we sit we like every night I go I hear daddy time for dinner if I don't get up immediately immediately she runs in there daddy time for dinner daddy hurry up we're gonna eat dinner daddy I just I already know when they're doing it because I don't want to hear it we sit down we look at each other Every once in a while, she sticks her finger in the ketchup and licks it. And I go, oh, whoa, 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 you got to say fucking prayers, all right? She says her <laughs> prayers, and we attack. And if I say attack, she gets pissed. Like, if she says her prayers, and I go, attack! <laughs> daddy, don't say that. No yelling in the house. <laughs> no yelling. Inside voice, Daddy. Yeah. Oh, fucking hysterical. It's important. My mom, my, you met my mom last week. The, the amount of dinners I ate in the living room or the amount of dinners I ate watching TV as a kid zero mm. we ate every meal at we a table. always ate at the table every too. meal my dad worked nights sometimes so he wasn't there all the time but he uh we never we we didn't have a tv on that floor <laughs> my mom hates tv we did have a tv in our kitchen though a little black and white one though like that wasn't a thing at the time you know what? like late 80s but off. we can't watch the tv when we're eating but I'm going to turn it off from now and out of respect. As long as we put it back on for 6.30, I got to watch my fucking day. Oh, yeah, you can watch it after. On fucking ABC World News tonight. I want to hear that. <laughs> I want to hear what that commie fuck got to tell me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me give some shout outs real quick here. Where's my fucking glasses? God damn it. How you feeling, dog? I'm pretty fucking high right now. I like it. I like it. I don't want to give you a fucking. I don't want to give you a Fugazi product. I want to thank my man, S Stephen Utzman from Texas. Listen to this, Bob Lalingus. This motherfucker sent me a signed Hollywood Henderson poster. Are you fucking kidding me or what? The poster is so fucking bad, Bobby Lalingus. I got to get the motherfucker framed. So I thank you, Lalingus, for dropping two books on me about Hollywood Henderson. And I want to thank my man, Stephen Utzman, from fucking the, the beautiful state of fucking Texas. God bless Texas, cocksucker. I will be there Friday night, Houston, at the Come and Take It Festival. Go to Come and Take It, I don't know, dot com. I don't know, fucking Google it. Do what you need to do. Friday night, 10 o'clock, you can get home from work, wash your monkey, shave it, go to fucking Carabas, get a nice Italian dinner, and still catch Joey at fucking 10 o'clock. How's that for you? Come and take it comedy dot com. Come and take it comedy dot com. Thirty five dollars for Friday night pass. You got Todd Barry at eight, and you got Uncle Joey at ten. Who the fuck? Uh, that's seventeen fifty a piece. What are you crazy or what? I'm giving you a nickel right off the course. Get those tickets right now, Friday at ten. But he's from the great state. How about J R Gomez, my man John Cutler, and his beautiful wife Amy, Lady J, Ookie Spooky. My man Benito, Reverend Raymond, Shet Nagog, and Inward Journey. I love you, cocksuckers. Stay black, and thank you for supporting the show and whatnot. How you feeling, Lee? All right? I'm feeling pretty, pretty good. What was the matter, Lee? I made you all nervous when I was. <laughs> you just I was do doing the finger of death. You know what I'm saying? You know how to torture people. What am I? I ain't torturing you. You're family. You, do, you know how to make my heart beat when I'm high. I can make your heart weep when I'm not fucking high. That's that's the secret there. What else is going on, Mickey Peasant? Tell me something I haven't heard. Tell me some gossip. Oh, Who got Jesus. hit by a car? What happened? Oh, oh, I remember something I wanted to talk to you guys about because the last time or one of the one of the times I was on, we we talked about weddings like in depth and how fucking insane and and out of control got, weddings right, listen, are. Listen to me before you even start on the fucking weddings. I tell you something, just so you know. Uh oh. Did have you seen my face getting red? Just dial nine one one. I'll explain <laughs> to you why. <laughs> right now I'm on the verge. I got a backache in September, my brother. Lenny, I got a backache. I never got. A, I got the back of a Mexican. You understand me? You never seen a Mexican with a back brace or complain about back pain. They just God gave them a good fucking back. They gotta jump a fence. They gotta gotta. If you gotta jump a fence, you gotta have a good back. Okay, so. I hurt my back, and I swear to God, I think it was thinking about the special, sitting down that long, trying to write out the jokes. I've never really sat that long to write that long. But the third thing I was getting aggravated about is I love her. She's my sister. But 
she's making all these plans for a wedding for me to fly back there and go to a rehearsal dinner with my family, <laughs> my daughter, my wife, and then sad I gotta walk it down the aisle and all this comes out of Papa's pocket. Like the three plane tickets, the fucking hotel, the rental car, and you're sitting there adding this up. This is New York City. You go to New York City, you gotta have deep fucking pockets for three days. Even though my family enjoys it and she'll enjoy it, my wife doesn't really wanna do it. Yeah. My wife feels it's too much of a commitment with people where we don't we know her. Right. And we know her mother. We don't know anybody else at this wedding. We'll just be sitting there like fucking targets, you know. And then we have the baby who gets car sick. They're doing the wedding in Garfield. Have you been to Garfield? Yes. Where the fuck is it? Um, it's nice, right? Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's not. Uh, it's it's a little bit down the Parkway. She's forty five. You think she's twenty one? Okay. Right, so right, I've right, always right. said, and I have nothing against women. There's a there's two things when women are completely, you know, either you give them a Cosby pill. <laughs> that's one way to get them under the fucking ether. <laughs> or when they're getting married, or. They're having a baby, and I, I don't mean to disrespect women by no means. I have every right to say that I have a beautiful wife, and I saw the changes in her personality, and then I started noticing other women's changes when a woman's about to get married or have a child. Mm -hmm. They get fucking delusional, okay? <laughs> they get delusional in their own sense. With weddings, they get really delusional. I mean, she was telling me and my wife to our faces last year, now, I wouldn't mind if she's 21 and she's my niece. Right, 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 but right. she's right. 46. She got glass. She Is got, this her first marriage? Yeah. Okay. She got registered at the Crystal place. Come on. <laughs> You're not going to get a Sforsky crystal for her I, wedding? I had my wife get her something, bro. I had my High wife just, just get her something, get her something. But you could already see where this is. Yes. Number two. I don't have the time to just take three nights off. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to get on a plane for six hours, I want something out of it. To me, I'm so used to getting on a plane for six hours, but I got to perform. Yeah, I can't just commit to you. Thursday's the church rehearsal. Friday's the rehearsal dinner at some fucking restaurant in middle New Jersey. And then Saturday's the, the wedding. I got to go to the wedding and the church. Are you fucking crazy? Are you fucking crazy? I would never do coke, but if I got to sit through that for three days, by Saturday, I'm on something. I'm on Xanaxes. I'm on fucking something. So what happened with your wedding? I just came I came back from New Jersey because I was the maid of honor at my sister's wedding. Okay. And my sister, um, they're young. She was like 26, 27. I think. The I get was, that. I right, get it. Right. They had just bought a, they bought a house. They already own a house together in January. So it's like they've been engaged a few years, but uh, yeah, they're, they're young. Um, and this could have been because this, uh, uh, you know, my brother-in-law now, like his, his family, like they've done big weddings for the daughters. Like this could have really been all out. They wanted to keep it kind of small, but still small. It's like a, a hundred people. You know what I mean? It's still a huge deal. So yeah, there was a lot of like events, like what you're talking about. And one of them, one of them was like the night of the day of the rehearsal dinner. Um, we, we went ax throwing. They had a bunch of people go, go hatchet throwing. It was hatchet throwing at this place. Then you go do the rehearsal dinner. It was like such a huge to do. But I had to throw the bachelorette party. And that's the story I wanted to tell on here. I had to throw the bachelorette party in August. So I had to go home twice because I also had to do the bridal shower because I'm the maid of honor. I, my mother really planned most of it. But, you know, so I, it was me and two other girls in the bridal party. And the girls are my brother-in-law's sisters. So my sister wants to go to Atlantic City. She wanted to stay at Bergada. I, I came home, I go to make a reservation at Bergada, it's booked. So now I'm panicking, because I'm not thinking it's August in New, in New Jersey in Atlantic City it, on a Saturday night. So I fucking panic. And I think, well, I, I, I gotta book the strip club now, because I'm too fucking scared. If Borgata's booked, what else is gonna be booked? So I booked this place called Hunkomania, that's a male review. And I and because I don't know who's going yet, I book it for a VIP booth for twelve. For twelve girls. But I don't know I don't know how many are gonna deliver for me. But I I'm I'm overbooking everything because that one booking was fucked. We got a, a room at resorts that I'm basically <coughs> like, I hope we can all shove into one. After I book all this shit <laughs> out of the two bridesmaids, basically they flat out both tell me that they're not going to go. And that they're against 
male reviews and strippers as if I like they made it New seem, Jersey girls yes, yes. Tom's River yeah, they gotta get it together. Tom's River. They've been buying it. They've been watching the Kardashians too long. I some mean, shit. I, and I'm like, and, and to me, it's inconceivable because it's like, well, what do you mean you? What do you mean you don't want it? Like this is one of the, one of them said, it. It's not my thing. It's not your thing. It's it's not your fucking thing. It's my thing. It's my that's my, Lee. That's my thing. Hunko mania. I love going to. I love watching Magic Mike. It's a fucking bachelorette party. What else am I supposed to do? So only only two of them ended up coming to Atlantic City, the two other bridesmaids. So I'm paying for fucking 12. I'm going to be paying for this forever. It was so much. I charged it. It was so much. One of the girls finally caved and came with us. The other one stayed in the hotel room, didn't leave the hotel room all night. And when we came back from the two-hour show, she was like in bed in her pajamas. Then the other one got in bed. How old are they ordered girls? room service. They're both younger than me. Um, maybe... Uh, 30, they ma- they 28, married, they married. they're both married, they both have kids, young kids, and they both, my sister, for when they were getting married, did all their shit, and now it's like her turn, and and it, I got the vibe that it was like, because they have kids, they feel like they can't do, like, to me, this is so fucking, it, it's, it's corny, like, I, I'm sure you guys have never been to one of these, but no, I've it, never been to it's one. like the movie Magic Mike, nothing happens, there's not like dicks out. They're not slapping you with dicks. It's it's nothing crazy. It's like a, a Broadway play, but you know there's speedos they involved. They bikinis on and they rub their it's fucking. So fucking it's, it's so fucking corny, especially yeah, especially yeah. like um, doing things like with the naughty show and like going to going to the AVNs for years. For me, this is fu- like I just want to say, do you understand? I judge like a porn star asshole competition, and you don't want to go see a guy dance in a fucking bikini. Like how? And and one of them, the girl, when we left, she goes, she goes. That was the most intense experience of my life. And I thought, holy fucking shit. That's so sad. That's imagine. It's crazy. I've never it was been, insane. I've it was never insane. Been part of any of those things. Okay. I left North Bergen before any of those things happened in my life. I could tell you guys sincerely, I don't even remember going to a fucking bachelor party. I've been married <laughs> twice. At my bachelor party, the first time was me, my friend George, and my brother-in-law doing an eight ball, <laughs> watching some fucking video, because I had like four days, I knew I didn't have to piss in a bottle for the halfway house, and I knew I could let myself go. That was my bachelor party. I didn't even think of women as strippers. Right. And I'm a filthy fucking animal, you right. know what I'm saying? But I get the uh, the bond you have, especially coming from New Jersey. There's six of us. We all help out on our weddings. When you got married, you did this, and everybody went. Now, it's a different game, so you want to take your ball and go home. Right. Even me, who I'm a dickhead like when it comes to that. If Lee came to me and one of his friends or his brother called me and said, listen, Lee wants to go to a strip club, the one in Van Nuys. You know what? From 8 to 9, it wouldn't kill me. Lee wants to see me right. for 10 minutes and talk to his high school friends. Right. I could go in there, get a lap dance, buy him a lap dance and leave you know i could do that and i could even handle that i could even handle that one right there especially if all i gotta do is down the block in atlantic city if you make me go to culver city by the airport i ain't showing right you know what i'm saying if it's one of those strip clubs i ain't showing this is like we got we got the room at resorts on the boardwalk beautiful ocean view room expensive fucking room and you're going down fucking an elevator and walking like a block to this like theater in Atlantic City where these guys do this bullshit. I did I I thought I was doing a corny wholesome almost like not you know what like I mean? Like five girls going out. Yeah. Lee, Lee. Let's have some drinks. Right. Exactly. They toast and shit. <laughs> yes, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, we're one of the guys. Exactly. I, we get the champagne. Cool. Oh my god, we're gonna who brought singles? Like I think I'm playing the role. I think I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. That's not me. That's not who I am. I think I'm I think this is what everybody wants. And it's like, as soon as I booked that shit, the whole thing turned on me. And, it, and all of a sudden, then it was like I was some sex-crazed heathen trying to drag, you know, their their uh, brother's and the new wife down. Looked, the next day, they looked at you all weird, and nobody was really hung yeah, over. Yeah, and then what am I supposed shit. to do, too? Because the idea, too, that anyone, like, I, I had to, like, sneak away. And this is in New Jersey now. I had to sneak away at one point and, like, smoke pot on the street by myself. Because I, I can't even fucking smoke pot no, in the room. Because I can already... If you're not walking in the mail review, 
I'm not lighting up this fucking joint in this hotel room. No, and that, you don't that's the way it's going to be. Smoke in a hotel that's room the way anyway. it's going to be. First off, they charge you two fifty, and that's if somebody doesn't complain. That's if the maid smells it. And if they don't complain, if they, somebody complains, then they have to knock on your door. I'm and, worried about the yeah. actual, the the people I'm with complaining. Like it's so far instant <laughs> to anything that I'm used to being you know, around. Weddings are nuts. They're we're nuts. A conversation how my mom died. The anniversary was last week. Thirty something years, at that, you know. But mm-hmm. Lee and I and his mom went out. And it was really interesting to do it. You know, you really don't know what you have till you lose it. I live now in wherever the fuck I live, Valley Village. Lee's twenty eight years old. I have him doing this. I torment him two days a week plus three days a week on the phone. Then I go on mm-hmm. the road. I I don't want to take Lee anywhere. You know, I love Lee to death. Lee, go, Lee knows. We go to dinners. We have nice times. But for me to call Lee at 11 and go, like, yeah, I know Lee will go with me to New York Minute to fucking the burger place. And I know Lee will do a thousand things with me. But Lee, Rogan, uh, Ari, guys like that, they, I love them dearly, but they don't fill the void left by the style of people I grew up with in Jersey. Mm-hmm. And I was really feeling it the last couple of years. That every time I go to Jersey, it's basically a work situation. Yeah. Like when I fly in Wednesday night, Thursday morning I do Opie and Anthony. Thursday night I do The Stand. Friday I do Gotham. Saturday I do Gotham. And I'm on the first flight at 6 a.m. And either I got to see him at the shows, which is a three-minute conversation because I got 270 people standing there waiting yeah. to take a picture. Yeah. And waiting to tell me this story about life and stuff. And it started bothering me. And then uh, a guy from our neighborhood, Carmine Balzano, the cop who shot the guy in the back seven times in self-defense, he died. And I and at the wake, they took they went to my teacher's bar and they took pictures. And these are kids that I know since the sixth grade. And I, and I contacted each of them on Facebook and I said, listen, man, I'm going to fly in, but this time on Thursday, I'm not going to the stand. Yeah. I'm going to go to Barone's Bar, our seventh grade teacher's bar, meet me there. And two girls in the sixth grade, three girls, in the, four girls in the sixth grade came. Uh, a kid from the eighth grade came. Another friend of mine from the seventh grade came. And Mr. Barone, the teacher. Wow. And we just sat there for three hours. Nobody got hammered. Nobody... They didn't, you know, they didn't even know about the reefer I smoke. Like, I right. wouldn't even bring it up. I went in there half lit, you know. But I got to tell you, as simple as that was, it made my year. Like, and I was home by 1030, quarter to 11. I remember the girls were like at 9, they're like, boy, we're getting tired. <laughs> but I know these girls since the sixth fucking grade. Then I ended up doing seventh grade. I got left back and they got to the eighth grade. But I still remain friends with them. So... It's like now I want to get more involved in those type of things with my friends. Like I have a friend who has a band, the Past Masters. Mm-hmm. They, they, they're a fucking uh, cover band. He's a great kid. I mean, I've been hanging out with him since we were 12. He had a shed behind his house. Mm-hmm. And he had drums back there and a guitar. No heat, though. So in the dead of February, you were oh. back there with gloves on <laughs> and a fucking snorkel. And he has, he has a band called the Past Masters. And I'm thinking of looking at his schedule or maybe flying in and just surprising him because he, he went to my mom's fucking funeral. Oh. He went to my mom's fucking wake. You know, like that's how long I know him, you know. And it's five guys who have day jobs. He's an engineer. Uh, he works at Sachs Coleman or something. Like he's one of a financial investor or something like that. And there's like five guys like that that are well off. They have great jobs and they have a band. And they play all around Jersey, and they do Springsteen, and they do, you know, some Bon Jovi, and, you know, whatever, The Who, and whatever, and they do. But every time they have a show close to my hometown, a bunch of people, whether it's Maywood or shit like that, people show up, you know. So it'd be great to see those guys again. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would get pissed at your two friends. Like, I would go upstairs and straighten them out. Like, listen, ladies, let me talk to you. Sit down for a second. (laughs) You girls got lady. You girls got husbands. You got kids. I get it. You want to be respectful. You got to go down there for fifteen minutes. You got to put a fucking dress on. 
I got some weed. What was the last time you said? And they'll look at you and go, marijuana? Oh, my God, how juvenile. I don't give a fuck. That's what you guys need. You need two hits of this weed or a black dick up your ass <laughs> to loosen you up a little bit. You're married and with a kid. We don't want you to go out and get raped and meet a guy. That's not what we're saying. Right. But have a good time for 10 fucking minutes. Okay. 10 minutes. Go in there, giggle, see how cheesy it is. Yeah. Look at that guy. He and I'm, gotta, older, he, I'm older than both of them. I've been married longer than both of them. Um, and one of them's married twice already on their second marriage. So it's kind of like, and younger than me. So it's kind of like, hey, I know you're no angels. So let's cut the shit. <laughs> this is all about, th- this isn't about what me, what I want or what you want. This is about my sister, my nice sister, who's been so nice to everyone. My sister's fucking an angel. You have to understand. And so is the kid she's marrying. They're so nice and innocent. That's what made it so funny to see her get picked up on the stage by the black guy in the bathing suit. Okay? Because she's this dainty little girl, and he was winging her around, and we're throwing money. It's just fun. It's just fun. It's just fun. It's not dirty. And it's... <laughs> that's... It's a reason to scream and get drunk if you're a girl. God damn it. And we... Everyone should have been on board. I, I hadn't been in the strip club since... Like 1999 in Canada, before 9/11, when I go to Toronto, I would go to Bloor Street, best strip clubs in the world, beside the one I grew up in in Jersey with the frozen bananas and shit. <laughs> this one didn't have frozen bananas, but the women were more risque. They put that bush in your face. Oh man! You know, I don't know. It just wasn't for me. Yeah, no. Strip clubs weren't for me, and it started bothering me. Like at the comedy store, the body shops down the corner. You don't know how many times those guys have gone to the body shop, and I'm like, no. <laughs> and they're like, why? What is the problem? I even dated a stripper for four years. When I moved to L.A., I moved here with a stripper. Oh, wow. And then she danced on the Lysanaga, and then she just went crazy and started dancing, fucking in the valley or whatever. But I wasn't dating her anymore. And she still dances once a week, and she's a psychiatrist. She has a full-time job <laughs> as a psychiatrist in some fucking place. And then three hours from her house, like on every other Sunday, she goes. She has a bunch of regulars. She gives hand jobs. Oh wow! She'll fuck you for two hundred. So a, she's really in it for the love of the game. Like she's she was you know she grew up in a cult. She had to fuck the leader. She had to cut his toenails and <laughs> oh shit. What do you God. think? What do you think happens to you? <laughs> that shit sticks with you like herpes for the rest of your life. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so last year I finally broke down. Last holiday, I went to the comedy store on a Sunday night. I had a great set. I was driving back, and I missed my exit. And I kept going on the 170. When I made the right, boom, there was a strip club. And I made a U-turn. I went in, and I got a lap dance. I didn't get a drink. It was empty. The girl was great. Her boyfriend listened to the podcast. She knew who I was. Oh, my God. We talked. I tried to ask, oh, can I lick your monkey? She said, not at all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of shit you won't do when you go to a strip club. Until it's right in front of you. When they dance <laughs> nude in front of you and it's right here, it takes about three seconds that you want to bite that fucking clit. All of a sudden you're feeling like Trump and you're like, I can't do this shit. I can't bite fucking clit. I've never been to one. I, I, the, the, you have never been to a strip club? Really? I've never even walked into one. No. Even I've been to a, a female I, one. No. I wouldn't know what to do with you at this trip. I wouldn't know. I want to take you to one where you can get your pipe sucked. <laughs> really? I don't think yeah. they do. they exist anymore? Fuck yeah. <laughs> down by the airport. Do they exist anymore? Yeah, where Eddie Bravo used to work. You take those girls upstairs, <laughs> they'll suck your pipe for fucking the deuce, the small nickel. Well, I knew, I knew like the massage parlors existed, but I figured these places might be a little bit more like uh, regulated now. No, there's no regulation. It's just you. It's the oldest chick. profession. Yeah, they start It'll dancing. It'll persevere. It finds they a, a way. Little, they get a little freakier. You throw a 20 at them, a 50, another yardstick. Uh, what? How much am I spending for this blow Who job? gives a fuck? <laughs> Make them lick your nuts. Make them pay for it. Make them drink the juice of death. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> See, now, now, I, now I think she has herpes because who? she's, she's going to suck my dick for $170. Well, who gives a fuck if she got herpes? So what? You never had herpes before? No. <laughs> it's no biggie. You take a couple pills. You drink some orange juice. That's a biggie. I don't want You're to back go. within a week. Who are you kidding? They got new medicine now. You get the herp, just tell Paula she got to move out for a month. There ain't no dick sucking a fucking this month, Paula. 
why not? Because I'm on new medication. I have no erection. <gasps> oh, my God. Meanwhile, you're leaking. You need a diaper for your little helmet and shit. <laughs> I don't think herpes just goes away like that. Well, what, it's got to do something. It's got to go somewhere. You gotta yeah, I think it stays something. there forever. <laughs> it goes dormant for a little while. That's so, what those commercials are about. So you just give Paul the herp. That's it. <laughs> Oh then it won't matter. She'll never know. Then just we'll, we'll glue a wart to your hand and tell her you got it from a wart or something. <laughs> Throw a toad in the bed. Yeah, when you finger the one night, you got the you got the fucking. Uh, I can see why. Like th- these are terrible plans. <laughs> They're the worst plans. <laughs> Festos. <laughs> oh, not festos. <laughs> For the, this is the plan so far. Like, gather oh a few God. hundred dollars to get a blowjob at a strip club, acquire herpes, hide it from Paula. Until she. This isn't a good idea. None of this <laughs> seems like a. See, it's, uh, we lost me. I had a point. disease for a while. I never got it tested. It went away after like four years. It oh just my, disappeared. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. I used to date this college girl. She was filthy. College girls are like kids in daycare. They're filthy, <laughs> filthy, and they got morals. Like I've never had sex, but I give blowjobs. What are you getting at? What are you getting at? What do you mean you you, you, you never gave? I I never had sex. But I used to blow my boyfriend in college. What are you talking about? What the fuck? Are you you got morals. You know what's funny? I I I, de- I used to have that stance for uh, you know my my first few teen years there. I I definitely thought for some reason in my head like blow blowjob doesn't count as sex. Um, it's its own as thing. As a Catholic? Um, no, no, no. I, I I swear I think it's just as a child of the nineties, like as a result of, of Lewinsky. I really do, where it's like, oh well, this isn't sex. That's the common that w- that was the thought of myself and my peers. Blowjobs aren't sex. I could suck a dick, I'm still a virgin. And I would I would really think like that, where it's like, Well, I don't wanna I don't wanna have sex with so and so, but like I would blow them and not think it was the same. It that would be nice to just hang out. There was a, a certain while. age where all of a sudden it was like, wait a minute, why do I think it matters what this number, like there's going to be this number of people, like I can't pass a certain number of people I've slept with. Why? I could, and honestly, it's probably safer to fuck someone with a condom than it is to suck their dick. So what am I, what am I doing morally? Uh, the, who gives a shit? But that was probably it's like however you look. It's however it's the guy looks at it. It's definitely after after college age. I don't even trust a condom anymore. Do you know that? I really, know. really? Yeah, I just I don't know. I I got really lucky. I was stupid and barely used them. Like barely, almost never. Oh my god! See, in my but head, I, I, was, it's I like, wasn't getting laid that much, so it wasn't it wasn't like it was a huge issue. But in my head, it, it's like you you I might automatically die. Like honestly, I might get pregnant immediately. I would be so terrified. I always, I always used condoms all the time. You know, the I was like crazy. H- HIV it. got spread like in '84 when Rock Hudson and stuff. And in '85, I met a girl. We went on a few dates, and, and we had sex like one of those heats of passion. I was young, she was young, and then she became my fucking wife six years later. So I was with her till fucking '90, right? '91, right? Mm-hmm. So I had no. No diseases and nothing like that. And then I met a girl right away when I separated. They were college girls. And then I ended up sleeping with her and the roommate and dating both of them and, you know, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's when I knew I had something. One of those two dirty bitches gave me something <laughs> from Kansas. I didn't know what it was. It was like leakage and itches oh and my shit. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> leakage. But I wouldn't go to the doctor. Fuck that. I would, <laughs> oh I would rub tuna fish juice on and move on. <laughs> And then I met the stripper. God knows what diseases she oh had. God. God knows. And with her, too, the first couple times, it was just fooling around and fingers and assholes and shit. But then we started having sex. And by that point, who cares about a condom? And I remember giving her a stabbing the first time going, I know I'm going to get something, but who am I? To, you know, who gives a fuck? I deserve something. Look at me. I'm an animal. Oh, my God. And I knew I got something from her. I just love how calmly you said fingers and assholes. Just, when you, when you're doing blow and champagne, but he ho hummed it. Yeah, he was fingers looking. and assholes. You know, no the basics. Not my asshole, and their <laughs> asshole. When I get coked up, I get all evil, and then um, I started doing comedy. And you know, those first from ninety three to who knows? You know, me and Lee sat outside one night and talked about stupid escapades. I couldn't sleep after we went home. It was, 
you know, you're on the fucking road around the country, you know, and so today I'm very lucky, you know, and I'm not even good looking. I can't imagine if I was like a hot feature act slinging dick after every show. I would just bump into victims getting high, you know. <laughs> the hottest girl will give you a piece of pussy at five in the morning when you're doing coke. I mean, it was like, once they go back to the hotel and the friend leaves and it's you and them, it's just a matter of time before the clothes come off. I don't care how engaged or how married they are. If it's five and you still got two grams of blow, I'm running against the clock here. I'm giving this chick a stab and she's going to show me her titties. I'm going to jerk off on her stomach. Something's going to happen here. Oh, my God. It's a true life. What do you think, Lisa? How are you feeling, brother? I'm feeling okay. I'm what, do you got, what do you got planned? So you got Pismo Beach. When are you leaving? Uh, late tomorrow night. So why Pismo Beach? What was uh, how was that decision formed? Uh, you're gonna laugh. Well, I, I drove by and it looks really cool. It looks really nice, but uh, we picked it because I pay, I picked the hotel because it's within walking distance to a movie theater and some places to eat. But it's, it's like right act. We're, we're going to Pismo Beach, but so do you have a beach there? Yeah, but are you close to the beach? Oh yeah, but I. I you're not bringing a bikini? And a, I'll bring it, but I, it's It's too December, cold to yeah. go in there. Yeah. I mean, you could still put a blanket on and go to the beach and get some vitamin D. That would help you a little bit. What do you, th- what do you think? What are you going to do, sit in a fucking movie theater all day like a fucking Dracula <laughs> while the sun's out like some fucking waiting for somebody to come in and shoot you? <laughs> yeah, let me go to, let's go to the movie theater and see a dumb fucking movie. Why you got sunlight and you're on a beach? I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to help. I'm gonna you out. go to the beach. You know, I love. And there's you, like, a butterfly go. thing, and there's a what kind of butterfly. I don't know. There's a butterfly garden. Okay, that's great. So there's you a her ten and tell her to come back when she gets back that you're ready to rock. <laughs> you eat ten stars of death. And you ain't gonna see no butterflies. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you're part of the death association. You, you don't see. You ain't got time for butter. What are, what are you, fucking some butterfly dude? What else they got? <laughs> The Hearst Castle. I don't oh, know. What are you doing there? I don't know what they got there. But yeah, how'd you get talked into that? That's get scratched from the addendum. Okay, <laughs> just call them tomorrow and say, listen, if I once I meet Henry the Eighth, then I'll go to a fucking castle. I'm not going to a fucking castle. Oh my god. Okay. All right. Well, there's a drive-in movie theater too. Yeah, there you go at night. And yeah, we're gonna do that. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'm at gonna night. Be... See, that's nice. Yeah, that's... I want you to get some. I do it during the right? daytime too. You can't go to the drive in the daytime. You retard. No, I can go to the other movie theater. The I know you. Oh, oh my God. Like, it's a joke. How <laughs> many movies do you need to see oh, this on this trip? Moron. It's a joke. We're going to go to the and beach. And he'll pick <laughs> one worse than the other. You have no idea. <laughs> I love him like a brother, but it's it's all over. He's the kiss of death officially. He can fucking step into shit. There could be four hot restaurants and one shitty one. He'll pick the shitty one where you get diarrhea and <laughs> people bleed from the uterus. I've never gotten food poisoning. No, 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 no. You never got nothing. <laughs> Cocksucker. Have you seen what restaurants they have down there? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Split them up. I don't know what I don't know yes, you memorized. Do. Yes, you do. You you already have your menu planned. I know how Lisa that works. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? No, I have I know I, you you listen. <laughs> last night you stayed in look me in the face, cocksucker. I know you and Paula got on the computer. No, we like didn't. Two Harvey homos that you are. You <laughs> sat there and you watched the restaurants and decided your meals. They have fries with carnitas. Look. Go ahead. Don't lie to Close, me. Close, but not, not quite. Lie, don't lie no, to I'm me. No, I'm, I'm going to be very honest. Go so, ahead. yeah, we didn't do it yesterday, but we did go on Yelp and see what's around the area. What I tell you? <laughs> yeah, because everyone you. does that, Joey. Not, not everyone a, just goes is, around by This is a feeling. Jew that acts like fucking Johnny Whitebread. <laughs> All right, and what did Yelp tell you? I, I don't have it memorized. Let me check. But I know that you, what restaurants are off the top of your mind. Go ahead. Let me show. You went on Yelp to take the advice from fucking strangers. Listen, no, 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 no. I'm just, you know me. We're just talking it out here. Yeah, you sure. went on Yelp to find the advice from strangers. Who do I know in Pismo Beach, sir? You don't need to know nobody. You keep your eyes open. You look for a rating. You look at the people serving. You don't want to go to a Chinese restaurant and some Arab serving you. You know what I'm saying? You can't have that shit. All right. So I have to do a scouting trip? Yeah, you walk around and you milk it. Pismo Beach has got to be somebody mm-hmm. selling burritos and tacos. Yeah, of course. All right. So but what did restaurants did you and Paula pick? See, All right. But listen to me. Uh, Vicky, you know I love you. I know this motherfucker like the back of my head. <laughs> he can't make a move without me being here. I know that she sat him down, and him and her 
in front of the computer like two fucking momos because he should know everyone better. does this no not everybody <laughs> not everybody only people like chad and and nathan those fucking mooks would do something like that can, can i just uh chime in because i'm I, I i expected him to google yelp he did that too he no. he, he actually did, he, did he, all that he pulled up his own personal yelp profile yes, he where did. there is a list of things saved yeah, you can bookmark them, yeah. because he already picked all these out just like you're saying i didn't pick the menus out though that's the one thing he's wrong about because i like to be surprised <laughs> yeah once and sometimes the menus i want to pick the rest fucking work place in town <laughs> And take the word from strangers. I'm just trying to help you out here. I'm just, I'm just an organized Jew. You just, yeah, you're not an organized Jew by picking out bad restaurants. It's not bad restaurants. And sitting on there. All four of them plus stars. All right, read the restaurants to me. All right, Fruitland, uh, Casa del Sabor. It's a Mexican place. Let me, let me go with the big ones, actually. Ventana Grill has a thousand reviews. Four stars. Uh, Steakhouse, Gibson's for 545 what else is there? Uh, what are the oh, no, that's in that's in Chicago. What are the chances of you taking out <laughs> a Gibson to even have the balls that's to bring? That's in Chicago. That's in Chicago. What are that's the Chicago. chances of you even having the balls to bring up Gibsons without getting a backhand? She likes steak. She's no, oh she my god! One no, time not. we didn't want steak. No, she doesn't. He'll, he'll never forget it. We we, you, we 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 want pizza. What are we talking about? I'm giving you a free card to go to Ruth Chris. Somebody sent us a hundred dollar gift certificate to go to Ruth Chris. He goes stop over. Give it a card, you know, take it on a nice steak, show her what it is to live like a fucking doctor. Okay? You know, he calls me back, hey, man, we, we, we both wanted wings and pizza. No, we did not. And they had pizza. They had pizza. Just pizza. Had and pizza. we had plenty. And bad pizza. No, it's not bad. It wasn't you even, ate like, there. It, it you wasn't ate even there. like good pizza. It's bad pizza. I can see if it's like, it's coming from Boston, frozen, my mom. You know, no, no. He got pizza. They waited online. Pizza Rev. No, it's not pizza. Don't right? lie you know me, where please. it's from. I'm, in, I'm embarrassed. I'm in fucking embarrassed. I tried. I tried. You don't where think I from? know all this shit? You don't think I know all this shit? I think you're gonna be shocked at the outcome. People look at Yelp, dude. That's why it's like a big, Nobody the biggest website Yelp. ever. Nobody looks at Yelp. No one looks at Only Yelp. Only you look at Yelp. Only I and pick restaurants from Yelp and <laughs> Grubhub, and you believe <laughs> strangers who don't know dick about food. Nothing. <laughs> They're worse than you are. You that's so you want to go start run. your own Yelp service. Because I ain't got time to eat at bad restaurants. Okay, <laughs> I hear about the best. We go in there, we conquer it, and we that's leave. That's it. That's all the website is. Two, two, like two lines. Like, that's all you need. Yeah. Just listen to what I'm telling you. Sure. Listen, because you like, like what do you say to me? The one I like taking chances. Yeah, you got to <laughs> yeah, okay. go, go, go for the yeah, restaurants. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah, that's great. Mm. Go take a chance by yourself. You ended up at Roscoe's Chicken eating fucking pigeon and God knows what else. You know, went up the corner 50 yards away. He was from Stout. I've been the to Stout eight burger. times. You've never taken another Stout. Yes, never, I have. No, you haven't. You yes, don't have the good news to take another Stout. You want to go eat a shitty burger on Lancashire and fucking Victory. He found a place that puts That's big. a good place. Yeah, it's a great place. Yeah, people talk about it all the time. I hear people. There's a line in front of there right where now. Would, where do you go to talk to people about restaurants? You yeah. know me, dog. I weigh 300 fucking pounds. <laughs> I roam with professionals. If they go somewhere good, they call right away and go, dog, I know what you're like. Go in there. And I take their advice. But I would never take the advice of some fucking dude on Yelp <laughs> or Grubhub. We're from the East Coast. We know the best. We're not going to take some advice from some fucking Jamaican. I believe in the goodness of people. Get the what goodness of people? They're like you. They pay, They put fucking pork on french fries like Gavones. Yeah, shit. and then they know what I like then. <laughs> That's not what I like. It's not, yeah, you know what you like. No. You're not going to stop. I'm telling you, he poisoned his father. I did not Paula poison. Paula ate bad shrimp already. Oh kimchi at some place. They just walk into a Korean place. I have people around yeah. me making bad decisions. I'm not making bad decisions. You're, you're the leader of them. You, no, I'm you not show the leader. Them. Yeah, because you enhance that. They eat dumplings at shitty places. You know, it, it's constant. And I love him to death. I love him to death with all my heart. I just want, and I knew. Did I tell you he went online already? Who yeah, of course I did. We, I was just so shocked to see the profile. But the best one? Yeah, You've I, yelped before. I don't write reviews. I have two reviews. You don't write reviews. Thank God you don't write reviews. <laughs> I don't write reviews except Thank for those God two. Thank God you don't spread your fucking lizard <laughs> no, meat tacos to places. <laughs> Oh, Who would you get mad at? Let me see the two <laughs> reviews. Oh, my God. Let's see. I think I'm... Please read one of one, these. Oh, shit. I have three reviews. One is from Denny's because I was angry at them. <laughs> Denny's! <laughs> somebody, somebody needs to look that up on Yelp. 
Oh, no, this is cool, actually. I have, I have one really good one <laughs> to help a guy out. And I have the, the zipline guy that fucked me over who I ended up closing. So that was They good. closed up shop? Yeah. They ran up. They closed shop. So that was good. Denny's. They took um, his money on fucking Groupon, right? Not, the, him and Harvey Homo. They take <laughs> a, he, he decides. <laughs> him and his wife decide, hold on. We want to be exotic for the weekend. We're going to go zip lining. You know, Lee, look at Lee. That line will go down. It will not go it's down. It's all over. You know what I'm saying? Why take the chance? Wait, what was the You gripe? wouldn't give me a Lee a zip line pass. <laughs> like that that's like right away you is there something wrong with you? <laughs> no, Lee's, Lee's mm-hmm. a do a deuce and a half. They put him on a little I'm rope. A deuce that, and a half. That, yes, you oh. are. That tree is going fucking <laughs> That tree is I'm going down. Not. Listen, he listen. He he's been telling me for. I haven't gained a pound. I'm no. I've gained like eight pounds. I'm on I'm on two fifty. Yes, you did. You, no, you didn't gain no eight pounds. Oh my pounds. god. Yes, I did. That's like, I know you did. Oh my god. Somebody even told me that they saw Lee. They didn't recognize him. They shit. That he's getting all Chinese looking again. Oh my shit. god. It's all over. They thought he was Don Barrera with a haircut. <laughs> that could be the edibles, though. Like, no, I, no, I gain. I have gained weight, but Festos, talk to me. Oh, Festos, stop fucking going on Yelp. All right. Oh, you and, wrote a review to the fucking Yelp line, and then I wrote a review. He called me that morning when, because listen. I'm the one that bears the brunt of this, ladies and gentlemen. No, you don't. You're thinking, you're fucking sitting there going, Lee, well, Joey, why are you breaking his balls? You know why? Because I don't bother nobody. I'm sitting there smoking my reefer. I got the cat in one hand. I'm looking at the baby. I'm looking at the wife. It's Saturday. I'm home. And I got a call from this Googoots telling me that his girlfriend bought him Groupon and Not fucking, group. you got to see this shit. You, you can't believe. Like, there's things I hear from him that I really can't fucking believe like you're living his living. negative yelp reviews no 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 oh, oh it, it's not even yelp reviews i'm living bad like listen at his age i was mugging people and doing blow i was doing prison time <laughs> who am i to judge this poor kid but look at him you don't want to put him on a zip line he takes one of those poles down i've zip lined many times no you have not Lee. As a kid, please stop a as a kid, I in have. your backyard when you were 82 pounds into no, the pool I'm, so they get the zip line pass for like 65 bucks. Him and his beautiful girlfriend, they take an hour drive. They just can't go to a movie or go find a cat. Next time, just go to Van Nuys, the bushes, and look for a cat. That, oh, no, you, you can't do it. You just got poison ivy. Look for a cat. Do something like that. No. They want to drive an hour to some fucking line drive. Now, I'm sitting at home going... This ain't going to work. <laughs> this kid's going to take down the pole. <laughs> He's taking down the pole, the oh, helmet. No. I'm going to get a call in an hour. Oh, no. First of all, like and by the way, I was at my height of Dave at this point, by the way. So height I was, what? I was at the height of going to Dave. I was like probably 2.30. Listen, please. Why are you boring me with details? <laughs> oh, you could take down any rope. No, but right. I could not take down no, a rope. Yeah, the, listen, the limit was 2.50. Get, yeah, the limit was 2.50. He got there. They took one look at Johnny Bananas here. They go, listen. <laughs> We can't put him on. Oh my this guy God. will take down the fucking pole. And then they kept his money because he put the hat on or something like That's that. That's not what happened. What happened? <laughs> they took your money, did they? They not? took our money, but they, it's because they they had the cheap system. When I, when I went, I don't know if anyone else has ever done zip lining, but they usually have brakes. So, But this one, you have to put your <laughs> hand down <laughs> and use this. hand brakes. All right, listen to this. So what But happened? you had to do it. <laughs> this is, so what happened? Tell so me. So I couldn't do hand brakes in two turns. To the level of expertise that this little asshole high schooler really w- w- liked me to, so he canceled me and like half the other group. So uh, and they said each time like four people get sent back. So it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not like a whole bunch of two hundred fifty pound chubby Jews going up there. There's regular people. They who looked can't at do you. Oh my they looked God. at that little fucking dinosaur hand on you, and they said it's never gonna work. He ain't gonna be able to stop it. <laughs> 250 coming at you. He's five foot two I'm coming up. at you on that rope, you know, on a vertical like that. I'm no engineering major, right. but even I, if even if I did that, it wouldn't hit you that much because he's more compact. I was just he's more compact. He hits there, you there's a density head. to it. Yeah, it's there, a density to it. He comes down like a boulder at you, and it's all over. That little midget saw him and said 250, no handbrakes, no can no do. Handbrake. You gotta go like John Panette, cocksucker. He calls me on the way home. We got thrown out. They kept our money. Sure, I keep your money for being stupid. That's what happens and shit. You no, want no, no. zip line. No, you can't walk close. around a lake and go fishing. You no. know, right here, right in Van Nuys, get a fishing pole. 
People like that shit all the time. I can't <laughs> believe that's what it was. You it's, don't write a negative Yelp review about a zip line place, and it's not a great story. No, no. If you look at the place, that's what everyone's complaining about. But <laughs> yeah, because they were two fifty. They were. No, oh my god. <laughs> They're eyeing you up? Well, so like, there isn't a scale. They're the, eyeing you up? No, there's a scale. You get on the scale with all your clothes on, and you still have to be under it. So it's not like it can be like 249. Like, oh, I hope not. You were 250. No, I'm not 250. Oh, my God. I'll get a scale right Listen, now. They didn't throw you out of there because you were 238. Stop bullshit. <laughs> no, I didn't get thrown out of there. I just told you I got thrown out of there. You were deuce and a half, and the hair break didn't work. <laughs> You so, said much, I gotta deal with, so much worse could have happened. And this is and four years get, of college. And then, and then I'll get yelled at for not doing stuff. So what am I supposed to do? <laughs> what not doing stuff? You're 28 years old. Right. When I call you and you tell me you just oh, watched eight episodes of Orange, Black, and Red. <laughs> sure, I get agitated. There's a thousand things you could do. Anything. Go to a park. Go, but he always picks the bad things. <laughs> A minor league baseball game two hours from That's here. That's fun as Surrounded fuck. You're by just wrong about that. You're they just... almost stabbed him in the neck. Oh, well, they didn't. You know, no. It's in the fucking like San Bernardino. I live, I don't know. I live in the house of horrors. I can do a documentary about this Momo. Every week is escapade. If <laughs> it's not like Pismo Beach, it's not no, every week. I think it's last a, time I was on, you, you had just went to a crepe cooking class. Oh, no, no. It's, it never ends. <laughs> it never ends. Random. Yeah, it's <laughs> random. It never ends. Yeah. And I asked him, why are you going to a crepe? Oh, because I'm, we're going to cook crepes. <laughs> never did I ever get a crepe. Never have You did get a crepe, and then you mounted <laughs> Yeah, I got, I got the crepe that, from you the night You got the original crepe, yeah. What, what was the other cooking class you went to to learn how to cook? A steak, and that was good. Yeah, I, I see how many steaks I get brought to the fucking <laughs> office. What was the other class? Dumpling. Yeah, I can see oh how many God. fucking dumplings you were going to make here, too. That one was a waste of time. No shit. All three of them were a waste of time. That one had, no. had, had a bad Plus had the bad trip service. to Pismo. Plus the trip to the fucking Lion Gate up there. Well, the what? Fucking Yelp and restaurants. I, think, I knew he did that. I knew that <laughs> so him does and everyone. his girlfriend sit there and they look at it together. I know this is what he does. This is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm not trying to put him down mm. for this. I'm trying to help him out. Nobody in America, unless you fucking walk around with a backpack and you believe in fucking Dungeons and Dragons. Nobody sits there with his girlfriend and goes, let's see out restaurants yes, and see what's do. in the area. This is fucking crazy. Because I mean, it's like, yeah, it's like, and there's then, no, I never go to McDonald's and they sell 99 million burgers. Everyone everyone hates on Yelp, but. Well, 99, Yelp 99 too, because you don't go there no more. Huh? 99 yeah. too, because you don't go there no more. I know, I used to go there all the time. They miss me. They write me letters all the they time. They got a new Big Mac. You thinking about it? And, uh, what is it, like three three meats? What is it? Is it just bigger? Yeah. I was never much. I, I I got into Big Macs at the end for a variety, but I was never much of a Big Mac person. What's the no McDonald's for? Just because it's trying to be it's fucking bad for you? Yeah. yeah, I miss it though. I, I haven't had Wendy's in over a year, and I'm oh, missing. It. That's a good one. That was your favorite Wendy's. Oh yeah. You're a lucky dude, brother. You're taking care of yourself a little step by step. I know you crave it. I know you'll cave this weekend and eat some fucking malaki down there in Pismo Beach. You always do. Dog, he can go down there with a plan. I could have the best chef in America come here right now and go, you're going to go to this taco stand, you're going to go to this little breakfast place, it's not expensive, and you're going to go to this place for dinner. He will fuck all three of those up. He will fuck them up. <laughs> He'll get talked into Thai food for lunch, and there's, <laughs> and there's a snake in his soup. There's always something. There's always something. You have no idea. Every time he tells me he's going on vacation, now I gotta worry all weekend. <laughs> now I gotta worry. Now I gotta worry because something. In America. The what? No, no, no. It don't matter. It don't matter. I can't wait to hear Monday the rash on your head. It's always no, something. No, there's no rash. The guy took your money. The the, the crepes. <laughs> there's always something. There's always something. My life is fucking tremendous. I have a great life because I I just sit there. He entertains. He doesn't even know. You're down the block from Stout and the best pizza around here, unless you have to go back east. He ends up at Roscoe's Waffles and Chicken. <laughs> Never he been there before. He gets back in the fucking once. car and goes to Roffles, Waffles, and Chicken <laughs> on Gawa on Friday fucking night, which I'd rather get shot in the goddamn fucking head than go on Gawa on Friday night. And I'll tell you why I don't go to Roscoe's and Chicken there. I've been to Roscoe's and Chicken. It was very delicious. Mm -hmm. It's a fucking, um, on a, whatever the fuck it is, Wilshire. It's an Olympic Pico. 
Picos Roscos. And then when I went there, I went there with black dudes. So I got treated with respect, okay? I'm not going to walk in there with Jew LaRue over here. <laughs> and, you know, that's the last guy they want to see at a black joint. A fucking <laughs> Jew and a Mexican at a black joint. They gave him the chicken from the fucking street. They gave him the oh chicken that they were going to throw out. They go, give it to these two fucking mamooks in here. This little juju ju- ju- ju guy who just came in here. Next time you go to a black place, you got to go in there with a black person, Lee. That's rule number one. Not a Mexican, black. Blacker than black. Afro, a, a pick in his hair. That's how you get good service at a fucking Just black. for the service, that's all? That's it, because now they can't fuck with you. They got to give you the good shit. You follow me? Okay. Rule number one, or go to Pico. Rule number two, don't ever go to that fucking place, because there's a Thai place. So while you're eating chicken, you got to smell curry. I don't fuck with, I don't mix both countries. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't do it. I won't do it. I've been invited to eat there. They wanted to take me there for a pitch meeting. I refused to go in. I don't like the smell of curry at no level. I don't like Thai food. I don't trust them. I'm a Chinese dude. Chinese people were here yeah. first. I've said it a thousand times. I, I ate sushi. It took me 30 years to eat sushi. Yeah, I'm very happy. yeah me too. I don't eat Vietnamese food. I don't eat Thai food. I don't eat no Wang Dung food. Nothing. I run with the Chinese, the Japanese, and that's it, cocksuckers. Everybody else got to stand on line and make me a nice menu. I've eaten with the <laughs> Filipinos. I had the pigeon one time. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, it's high in protein. What the fuck do I know? What would, what would you do if a, if a if a Thai place moved next to your uh, uh, dry cleaning? I would move the fuck oh. out of there. You understand? I just don't like the smell of curry. I don't know if it's Thai. <laughs> I shouldn't insult the Thai people. I'm very sorry. I do not like the smell of any curry whatsoever. You understand me, Lisa? Yeah, give me get the paperwork. How many times I got to tell you? It's like you're looking around the room. So you're leaving tomorrow night. What time? Probably around 8 o'clock. Thank God. How far is Pismo Beach? Two and a half. Two and a half? Oh, how nice. Where is this? Uh, half an hour north of uh, Santa Barbara. It's where? Half an hour to 40 minutes north of Santa Barbara. Okay, so it's okay. that way. Oh, yeah. very nice. Look at you. Fucking Lee is making progress in the world. I like him. I love Lee. So Trying. He's always having a good fucking time, all right? Let me tell you something. For the last month, uh, why am I lying to you, people? For the last three weeks... I have been drinking this Hint crisp apple water infused with crisp apple. They sent me a box. It had five different flavors. It had the raspberry. You know, I don't remember all the rest of the flavors, but I will tell you something. The taste is magnificent. There's none left in my refrigerator, okay? Not not one. Not even not even one. So, we enjoyed them. All right? Now, you should drink eight glasses of water a day, but who really does? Coffee, soda, energy drinks. Why don't you just drink more water? Because it's bland. You want something with that tastes good. You ever want to eat a sandwich? You can't eat a sandwich with fucking so, uh, soda. How can you eat a fucking uh, mortadelle with, with American cheese and a piece of salami and some lettuce with some vinegar and oil? How are you going to drink that shit with water? But I'll tell you what, with a nice sandwich, with a nice little crisp apple water, it's not that bad. That's why you should try Hint Water, all right? Hint Water was started by Kara Gold- Golden. A few years ago, after having a fourth child, she was overweight, had terrible acne, and overall felt awful. She was drinking 10 diet sodas a day instead of drinking water because water is boring. But water, other options are there. What other options are there? Juice is full of calories, and the no-calorie drinks are garbage. That's why she started Hint Water. Hint is pure water infused with a taste of fresh fruit that tastes delicious. Whether it's the mango, peach, mango, uh, grapefruit, or watermelon, and many more. It's got no sugar, no chemicals, just great tasting, all natural, fruit-flavored water. Both Health and Self magazines have named Hint Water the best flavored water. And they know how important drinking water is to your health, all right? So do me a favor. You don't have to carry these cases of water back in the store. You can have it delivered right to your door. What we're going to do is this. Right now, I'm going to give you a single variety pack shipped directly to your door, including three bottles of each of Hint's four most popular flavors, pineapple, watermelon, crisp apple, and blackberry. It's normally $24. We're going to do it for $15 at drinkhint.com slash church. Again. I'm going to save you $9. This water is tremendous. Drink Hint. 
dot com slash church. Again, that's drinkhint dot com slash church. H H I N T. Drinkhint dot com slash church. Give it a try. You save nine dollars and it gets shipped directly to your door. Now we've talked about this topic before, and we're going to talk about it again. The holiday the holidays are coming. You're sitting there. What am I going to get for this guy? What am I going to get for that guy? Listen, I got the perfect gift for you, right? Did I tell you that bidets are back? Oh, shit. You're sitting there going, Joey, what's a bidet? A bidet is this little fucking thing that snaps on. What I'm selling you is this. Bidet is a thing next to your toilet that you sit on and you put the water temperature and you sit on and it cleans your muffler. And you wipe it one time with a towel and you're back in action. You understand me? What we got today is a bidet costs thousands of dollars. But what I got for you is hellotushy.com. Listen to me. They're portable bidets. It, it, it's a device that sprays your butt clean with water. Like I said, I grew up with a bidet. After my mom died, I didn't know how much it meant to me. Ever since I've got my hellotushy.com bidet, my asshole's tremendous right now. You understand me? <laughs> Thanks to Tushy's sleep bidet that clips on to your existing toilet. Listen to me. It clips on to your existing fucking toilet and it sprays your muffler completely clean with fresh water. Think about it. You're sitting there. You close your eyes. You smoke a joint. It's like somebody's <laughs> spitting into your asshole. You could take this anywhere. You understand me? Who needs Calgon? Who needs Jillian Barberry with a fucking, that thing she's selling, that fucking, uh, the, 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 the fucking, what do you call it, elliptical machine mm -hmm. where you can press on a screen and you can be running through Australia. Fuck you. I got a portable bidet, bitch. <laughs> that water's hitting your asshole. You just close your eyes and next thing you know, you're a genie, Jack. You're floating. You understand me? And I'll tell you what, it's tremendous for you. It clips onto your existing toilet and it sprays your muffler clean with nice water so you're not sitting on bacteria which causes hemorrhoids, yeast infections, and just plain old rotten ass, all right? Bidets are better for the environment because they, they, they there's no fucking paper. So if there's no toilet paper, they save trees, all right? It takes one pint of water to wash your muffler. Think about it. Listen, Tushy stands behind that product with a 60-day guarantee, and the most guarantee they'll give you is you're going to enjoy it. Like I said, you're sitting there going, what am I going to get my sister for Christmas? What am I going to get my uncle for Christmas? Both of them got fat asses. Sit there next time you're at a party, stare at their pants, look at their ass, and imagine <laughs> what that fucking muffler smells like. You ever have one of those ants that comes over and you like her? She always gives you $20 at Christmas, but you know her fucking asshole stinks. <laughs> She's on disability. She eats peanut butter all day. She don't exercise. She don't drink water. <laughs> Give that bitch hello to she.com for Christmas. It makes a terrific stocking stuffer. Do you understand me, motherfuckers? Do you think I'd be here telling you this? This is the best Christmas gift you can give anybody. They will fucking send you shit every year. Joey, thank you. You sent me. You saved my life. I'm not bored anymore. I'm not on social media. I'm not hanging out with my friends. I don't go bowling no more. What do you do? I just take shits and sit on the toilet for an hour after that and spray hot water in my ass and dream of exotic locales. Thank you for saving my life. I've already had three people that have brought me fucking boxes of Hello Dushies to the shows, taking pictures and said, Joey, you've changed my life. You're like Joel Osteen. You're like, the, the, the bidet will change your life, all right? I don't give a fuck what you do for the holidays. This is the best gift you can give somebody. Go to hellotushy.com right now, slash church. Spell it, Lee. C-H-U-R-C-H. Boom! And get 10% off your order delivered to your door, all right? You know I love you, cocksuckers, with all my heart. Also, like I ask you always, you know I love you, motherfuckers. Do me a favor. December 8th, my special comes up. I need for you to download my special. It's CISOTV.com. They've got other fun, entertainment, great comedy channel. They're fucking tremendous. I need your help. I need for you to go to CISOTV.com. What is it? It's, I, think, I think it's just CISO.com. CISO.com and press in Joey. Bam, you're going to get two months subscription for free. It's usually $398, $389, $398. Don't matter. It's fucking gratis. <clears throat> so if you're going on there, 
And then you got Stay Home, and I come on December 8th, and I promise you, you're going to love the fucking new special, all right? Do me this favor. Even if you just get it and watch the first fucking 10 minutes, you make me fucking happy, all right? I don't ask you for money. Do I ask you for donations? Do I ask you for fucking episode money? Do it? No. You know, we're tight. You and I are fucking tight. You, you, you're my people, so do me that favor, all right? See, so... Here, Lee, it's right on fucking here, all right? Yeah, say because, yeah. Yeah, call out specific. All right, what I'm going to do is right now, my listeners can try CISO for free two months when you use the promo word Joey. So go to CISO.com right now and sign up for two months free with the promo word Joey at checkout, all right? Do me this favor. They got great cha- they got great shows on there, Chelsea Peretti special, Kumanji Nanjani, Ron Funches. They got Paul F. Tompkins on there. I mean, listen, it's a great channel. Do me the solid. Again, I want to thank my girl, Vicky motherfucking Peasant, for coming in. I also want to thank uh, Hint Water. I want to thank HelloTushy.com. You know I love you. I want to thank CISO for putting my special on. Again, CISO, the code word is Joey. And as always, listen, if it wasn't for Alpha Brain, I couldn't do a fucking podcast on Monday. They take the jet lag right away. You know who takes that cammy during the week? Uh, hemp force protein. That's what takes care of me. You don't have to believe me. Give it a shot. Go to honor.com and press in. Church. Boom! C-H-U-R-C-H and get 10% off the VIG delivered to your door. One of the best products out there. The Alpha Brain don't work. You get 100% money back guarantee. Again, I want to thank Hint Water. I want to thank HelloTushy.com. I want to thank Onnit and I want to thank my people over at CISO for taking care of me. I want to take care, t- t- take care of you by giving you the free special, all right? I want to thank Vicky Pezza, looking beautiful with her long hairdo for the wedding. Oh. And I want to thank my man Lee, who is stoned to the gill again. <laughs> again, he's sitting there not even knowing what fucking planet he is. But you know what? He's my brother Lee. He don't need to I'm, know what planet he is. Who gives a fuck? What are you going to say, Lee? I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm stoned, but I'm, I'm, that's stoned. No, I know. Everybody just sits up and looks up at the sty. And fucking, uh, that's one time he came back with a sty. <laughs> One okay. time he went on vacation, he came back with two styes, one in each eye, and then it wouldn't oh go God. away, it would come back. It kept coming back. His grandmother, his mother-in-law wanted to burn candles in his eyes, like Mexican witchcraft. He wouldn't let her. No, no she wouldn't let her. She told him, and the sty came back, because he's the fucking, you know. This is where I got to live with, ladies and gentlemen. Four years at Emerson. I try to help him, but he, he's on Yelp getting suggestions. <laughs> She wanted to burn jalapenos and put that on my eyelids. So That's yeah. even crazier. Yeah. But it gets you. rid of the sty. It lasted him a month. He walked around like somebody poked him in the eye. He had a little hemorrhoid sticking out of his eye. <laughs> it didn't squirt. Though. It always happens oh. right before I see him. It, like like it can it can't not happen. <laughs> like it happened once in Vegas <laughs> with him. I've ha- I've lived for twenty eight years. Never once had a sty. <laughs> I think I'm gonna be stress induced. Now he's gonna go. Pismo beats something dumb's gonna happen. They gotta ride a bicycle. Or I've already, I've, in the in the cause the case of this podcast, gotten w- at least one food recommendation for Pismo Beach. Okay, as long as so, you get, so believe them before you believe Yelp, and you'd make me happy. What's the food recommendation? Let's see. Is it a hummus joint? No, I don't think. I think I think it's a fish joint. Because it's a lot of seafood up there. There you go. There you go. But you don't eat fish because I I, don't I, I eat shrimp. It's got a nucleus in it. And Splash Cafe. Oh, shit. What, what kind of fish do you eat, Lee? You got uh, a nice piece of halibut with some french fries, maybe? Uh, a little coleslaw. If I'm going to eat fish, I like... Halibut's okay because it really doesn't really taste like much. Swordfish is pretty good. If they marinate it well. Well, I wish you have a nice time. You deserve it. You worked for, hard last weekend you. with your Uncle Joey. It's for her. It's for her. Cause sure, the, sure. The bar. What, is she, what are the results? Friday. So the, the, the bad news or the good news is Friday? Yeah. Is She's going to get good news. Oh, yeah. She'll, she'll be fine. Yeah, yes. Be fine. Oh, cool. Yeah, they have they have chowder. They have uh, shrimp and chips. I Ooh, get, shit. Listen to me. Ricky Pezza, he will not eat that. I will too eat here. He will not eat that. I want Gu- Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed. fucking teeth. He'll walk right past it. The boss will say, I don't want to go there. I don't the like boss. It. Monday morning, I'm checking in. Yeah, he won't eat that. I want to know. I'm going to tweet, I'm gonna tweet a meal from him. Was that now. called Splash? Yeah, he'll go Splash by himself. Cafe? He'll fucking <laughs> give her a Cosby pill. And when she's sleeping, he'll run over there, eat, and run back. Oh, honey, you must have passed out. It must have been the sun. <laughs> he won't go over there. Little, it's good. He'll, it he'll good. walk in front of her. He'll look at the menu. And she'll go, little Festos, 
We can't eat here. <laughs> throw you off the pier here. And then he's like, I'm going to oh, invite man. you here for my wedding and throw you off the pier. I ain't going to your fucking wedding, cocksucker. <laughs> yes, you are. I'm, I'm going to make like you this. go. I'm going to be like fucking Vicky Pezzes. I'm going to tell you, yeah, 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 in the last minute. Tell it's you, not fuck. my thing. Yeah, it's too fucking far. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'm going to sit there with Jews and Mexicans. I would never do something like that. I would never do something like that. I get shot in the fucking head. They would come right from Israel and shoot me right in the fucking head. <laughs> Who's that? That's like a Nazi movie, Jews in Israel and Mexicans sitting in one room. What do you think? Is, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Somebody in your family is going to get stabbed. That's what's going to happen. Some Raider cousin is going to come in. You're going to put on fucking Ice Cube. He wants iced tea. And next thing you know, there's a Jew bleeding in the room. That's all you fucking need. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. It is going to be pretty funny to yeah. see that. Uh, all right. Good. Keep, keep fucking fantasizing, fucko. That's what he wants. He wants damage and shit. Mm -hmm. Just just let him move in I don't want to fight. Just let him move in for now. Just get there. Takes you 10 or 11 years to get it together. You really don't want a roommate anyway. Watch. He's going to throw her out within six months. He'll throw her out. Oh. Once football season, she starts fucking with his world. This little dude likes to be alone. He don't get it. But he's a fucking Harvey homo. He invites her to move in. Move in. He doesn't know the mistake he talked himself into. <laughs> This is a kid that, since I've lived with him, hasn't had a roommate. <laughs> have a great weekend, guys. Thank you very much. We'll be back Sunday night. You'll have a podcast Monday morning. Listen, like I said, this fucking Friday, Houston, Texas. But next Wednesday, the Irvine Improv, the night before Thanksgiving, 8 o'clock. Myself, Steve Stamone, and Lee Syatt will be there. I love you guys. Have a great weekend. Stay black. That was a Oh my god, hilarious. Oh my god, my face hurt. I <coughs> like yelp. I was like smiling. Somewhere in the lonely hotel room, there's a guy's daughter. He realized that eternal fate has turned his back on here. It's 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m. Destination unknown, double cross messenger, all alone. Can't get no connection, can't get.